This. This is a love story. Everything around burns and crackles. Heat moving through a location that was, by design, never factoring in the presence of fire. No sprinkler activates, the fire simply burning and spreading. As it travels through the location, it almost starts to hiss and dig into the walls, as if the blaze itself were alive. Someone lies cut open. She keeps herself together barely. Metal and cabling innards spilled out over the throne of reality. She drags herself forward slightly, looking up at the being in front of her. The one who did it. She slowly turns herself around, dragging a large, almost desecrated blade with her. She turns. Destruction, through her teeth, barely whispers out. I give you a chance, and this is how you repay me. Sikizer takes another step forwards, Almost disregarding the one that functionally created her, she looks back and forth as edges of the astral sea push inwards to destruction's locale. She moves outwards, allowing the sea to take this place. She holds out one hand uh, as almost reality begins to bend and warp around her. She takes another step forwards as destruction's voice echoes out. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Why? Unable to understand why this being in front of her, this reflection, would turn her back at this exact moment. It's not something that exists within her consciousness. Her duty should outstrip everything. There is one rule when a reflection is created. They will, without fail, fight for the sake of the world. As destruction's eye gazes back and forth across the room, the scattered bodies of multiple reflections killed by Seagazer, legends cut down in their prime, heroes that will never be remembered. She can only think one thing. This being was not meant to be. This is not a being capable of fighting for the world's future. And so she seeks instead to understand Sigazer looks back, eyes staring down at the tiny, diminutive being at her feet. She shakes her head once, and intones the same thing she's heard again and again. I think if I was going to phrase it dramatically, I'd say this is a love story. She takes a step forward and vanishes into the sea in front of her, leaving the central hub of all reflections burning behind her. In time, this event would pass, leaving the throne of reality empty, resulting in the chaos in which you've lived your lives. However, on the far side of that astral sea, in a place far more grounded in reality, wrapped in oceans and ash, a comms line slowly opens as, uh, Cam, you sit in the group chat. Mind telling me what you're doing here? He is waiting patiently for any of his siblings who need to talk to him to come and sit with him. You simply sit and you wait as... Let's do this one. Ah, uh, it's a little too intense. Yeah, this one. Okay. <clears throat> the comms line actually does come to life pretty briefly in. Cursor comes on the line. Hey. Hi, Cursor. Um. 
I heard some weird things from Geist. Is it, is it true? He nods. Yeah, it is. Are you okay? She sort of goes quiet. There's another flare on the comms. As somebody else chimes in. Oh, okay. You're in here right now. Mm, uh, I had some I had a chance to sit. I figured you guys might need it. I'm currently on standby right now. I can check in. It's, it pauses to see his cursor. Ooh. <laughs> And then, another click on the comms. Hey guys! <laughs> Danger oh. joins in! Danger, are you sure it's okay for you to be in here right now? Uh, yeah. I could do both at once. Argus is doing a really good job of keeping us all informed. And then, again, two more people hop in. You realize that this is happening simultaneously, and uh, Argos, serve to your side, actually patches, like, patches into the group chat, almost dragging you with, incidentally. He wants to remain on the line with you for strategy coordination, but uh, also sees the family gathering and winds up popping in simultaneously. He's oh, like, oh, oh dear. I'm, I apologize for dragging you with. Uh, I don't, just in case something happens, I don't want to be apart from you. <clears throat> yeah, it that makes sense. I apologize if this is uh, awkward. <laughs> he, he uh, sort of speaks up. Um, uh, you actually hear Cass's voice chime up on the line like, Oh, Argus, how are things going on your end? There's uh, a lot going on, but we're, we're keeping it together. Hmm. We're currently dealing with the front... Uh, we're dealing with the front in Fuse City. Um, what are you all doing? It's an awkward question, almost to try to broach the silence, move on past the obvious elephant in the room. Cursor speaks up. She's like, "I'm um, I'm I'm in uh I'm in Geist HQ right now." She's trying to keep it together, man. <laughs> Oh god, I don't know if Ken can still do this because he's, like, not in his AI form. Mm -mm. Can he pat her? Uh, you can make the gesture. <laughs> yeah, he'll make the gesture. <laughs> <clears throat> um, oof. Uh, Argos, you look over and you see, uh, you, you see and you feel, actually, through your connection. Um, Cast doing, uh, the thing that they do, and uh, like basically putting on putting on the big boy pants and being like, okay, um, I know a lot's happened, particularly recently. Um, if you need time to consult or talk about this, uh, looks over to Cam. We are currently functionally on call. If you need to speak to us, um, but simultaneously. Don't take any risks right now, particularly mm. unnecessary runs. Um, yeah. I know I know the temptation is probably going to light a fire in your belly and make you go, oh, I got to get in there. I've got to make a difference. But uh, don't double down on... Uh, don't double down on a tragedy. The cast sort of pauses. Keep, keep yourself in mind, and if you find yourself confused at any point... Um, or if you think you're maybe making a risky decision, don't hesitate to contact us, or if you're nearby him, um, I'm sorry, Argos, I'm volunteering you for this. <laughs> no, please. Yeah, I'm gonna be sitting in here for as long as I can during the duration of the rest of the mission. If you need someone to sit and help you make decisions because you can't think properly or you're having a hard time, I'll be here for you. Uh is just like, oh, okay, okay. Um, sniveling turns over to Argos. Did the satellite up blink out, but... Yes. It saved the day. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing things like that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Click, they go offline! 
Dane's just like, yeah, similarly, Ar Argus has been like directing me real good. Um, <clears throat> uh, we've saved a bunch of people. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're doing great, Danger. Service has been really cool, too. Okay, I'm gonna go back to protecting people. Click. <laughs> I served just visibly. <sighs> they are more composed than I expected, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm a little... I'm a little upset that Cursor had to find out from Geist. Um, mm -hmm. Information how are, out and all that. How are you two doing? Uh, Cass, like, hmm. Uh, I haven't had much time to think about it, to be honest. I've been mostly focused on everybody else. I'll probably do most of my unpacking later. How about you? Um... I was taken by surprise, I suppose. Luckily, I'm in a position where I can just kind of pause for a little bit. So I'll probably just sit here until uh, things develop in the mission and I'm needed. Fair enough. I've, I've got an important role to perform, but after that, I'm pretty much free to do whatever. I'll either join up with Argos's unit or retreat if that seems too risky. <laughs> Not to... Uh, yeah. Not just imply that you don't have the situation handled or anything. I just, uh, after that no. lecture I gave, I've kind of got to stick by my words. <laughs> we want everyone to keep safe. Mm. And uh, thanks for doing this. Mm. Same thing to you. <laughs> they actually smile. How are you holding up? I'm focusing. Serve actually, like, looks over at you and, yeah, gets, like, gets a similar look on his face. He's like, it's a good word for it, yes. Um, currently, Argos is juggling multiple scenarios at once. He actually looks over at you and he's like, in terms of your parallel processing power, uh, I'm actually shocked that a uh, normal flesh and blood human can keep up with us. Hmm, are you sure you're doing all right? Don't put yourself under so much stress that you end up, like, passing out or something. Yeah. Well, the same goes for you. I know you're being here for everyone, but don't neglect yourself, okay? Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> There's, like, that really, like, a weird pause where he, like, <laughs> has a response but doesn't say anything. <laughs> Cast like chimes in and is like okay well I'll give you guys an update when my scenario resolves itself I'll catch up and uh, if anything goes wrong I'll check in right now you probably don't need any distractions from me but also I'm kind of bored waiting around so <laughs> they give you all a thumbs up and then disappear ah <clears throat> that was a very uh, indirect awkward way of saying that they wish to talk. Okay. Fascinating. Um, <laughs> sort, of, sort of pauses. If you need if you need a moment, uh, looking over to you, Argos, at any point to either arrest your mind or go attend to business, he says, looking at the uh, area that Cass just disappeared from, um, I can attempt to handle strategy for the moment. You deserve a reprieve as well. Thank I can you. also help if you need me to, but I can't say I'm an amazing strategist. And that's a load off my shoulders, <clears throat> hearing that. It's it's funny, in terms of like, I, I can't describe what Argos's emotions are right now, but uh, it is strange, in terms of like, the physical fatigue. Um, even earlier this month, you can tell that this situation would be uh, absolutely wrecking you. Um, in terms of not only organizing all of these people, but just, like, the scenario and the intensity. And you're unsure of whether or not it's you, the adrenaline coursing through your veins, which, admittedly, there is a lot of right now. <laughs> or, if it's something else, right now, your parallel processing is indeed extremely powerful. Yeah, um, uh, Argos is not going to 
question it. It's working yeah. in his favor. <laughs> this is not like a game force in the mouth. Force, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, hey, this is working out for me. Why not? Um, Serve is like, well, in that case, shall we return to the battlefield? Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Take care, Cam. They disappear as Cam, you were left you are left sitting and waiting. And, um, uh, hey, Cam, could you give me a roll to die? Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. You'll love to see it. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's, it's an interesting sensation. You can tell you should be feeling something right now, but you pat your body down and, like, it's not happening. Yeah. Another wonderful gift of the first water. Uh, all of this, all this pain that you should be feeling, that you definitely should be feeling. You feel the spot that it should be. It's not there, though. You. <laughs> this works in our favor. <laughs> not looking to give gift horse in the mouth, right? <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, you sit and you quietly wait as the first water washes over you. Elsewhere, the only missing AI (laughs) continues to drive forwards into the depths of the derelict. And as they do... Let me get let me get some dramatic yeah boss music for this dramatic uh boss room. <clears throat> so <clears throat> microphone places herself on what end uh one end of what appears to be a raised flat arena. Uh a figure stands atop it, looking down at her and and her party as behind. She can tell the path the higher in the derelict rests over there. She sort of stops, turns, looks at everyone. Seder offering her a nod. Uh, List doing the same as she continues making her way deeper. Thunk, 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 up the stairs, climbing onto this raised platform. As the GK stands there, he raises one hand. He's like, hold up. Can't say I expected this exact party to make it here. Looks over at Seder. Didn't you just escape? Seder like, what can I say? I'm already sick of the place. Uh, he like, shakes his head. Okay. Um, well, regardless, your disappointed ace isn't here, right? Regardless. He turns and summons a blade from nothing, flame intermingling, creating a blown glass weapon. You're not going to make it past me. Ace is deeper down fighting Venter. Hmm? Yeah, I said head down, go, 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 go settle that score right there. Get out of our way. <laughs> My Glalian tones from the far side of the area. The GK pauses. Hmm. <laughs> thinks, waves a hand, and slowly unsummons a weapon. Uh, he takes a step forward. He, he specifically requested me. Yeah. <sighs> sort of size. All right, fine. <laughs> he tilts his head and moves to the side. <laughs> Seriously? Just like that? (laughs) Okay, man. Uh, Seder starts to walk forward, list like, thank you. She rushes past first. Mike starts to move in this direction. Um, As she sort of pauses, the GK like looks down the way and sort of slumps slightly. Uh, She's like, I honestly expected you to let us pass, but um, that was a lot easier than I expected, to be honest. GK sort of shrugs. He's like, get off my back. It's just a walk in this direction. As Mike actually reaches out a hand and she 
You'll love to see it. She reaches out and uh, grabs the GK's arm for a split second. Uh, the GK pulling away like, ow, what the hell? Um, she pulls back and uh, sort of pauses. She's like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, don't mind me. Go about your business. <sighs> Let's out a grunt and disappears into the distance. Like slowly opens and closes her palm, a realization spreading through her mind. It's a funny thing what she goes through in this moment. <clears throat> a realization that that person back there, in terms of her sister's death, is actively mourning her more than she is. It's a funny thought that sort of crosses her mind. Mike exhales slowly, and I'm going to roll for her again. She beats a 20. She manages to center herself to some regard. Pulling herself through, she uh, starts to walk. For a moment, it's almost like a shard of doubt struck through the side of her mind. But she almost comes to a quiet realization as she travels around the rest of her group. All of that screaming and crying, all of that anxiety that's constantly bubbling up inside of her, it's preparing her for a disaster that she always expects will someday arrive. And the moment that it has, Shockingly, she is locked in and falls into it as easily as a fish does to water. She walks her way forwards, ascending the derelict along with the rest of her party. But someone else is currently thinking about this individual. Or more, trying to consider the different angles at which this creature approached her. Uh, approached him. At the center of the derelict. Over here. <laughs> Despite everything that Vinter has just said, he's currently running the scenario as it occurred mere moments ago. He looks over and past you, Ace, and almost seems lost in his own thoughts. He looks at Riddle Arendite on the far side of the battlefield and runs through the events that led to his arm breaking. He reconsiders what happened. It was a very simple thing. Exactly where Ace was, Mike set up a defensive. Repeatedly, he tried to puncture to the other side of that defensive, and repeatedly, he was rebuffed. His situation was contained until... It almost felt like he blacked out for a moment. There was a snap. One of his arms broke, and he couldn't tell which between the two beings did it. He looks over at Riddle, and then looks back in the other direction. Shaking his head, he looks at Ace in front of him. Honestly, I shouldn't be lost in the past with an opponent of your caliber in front of me, but I find myself a little perplexed. What is old age getting to you? Yes, if I have another fainting spell and one of my arms pops off, uh, I'm afraid we'll have to delay our bout. <laughs> he sets himself and actually twists one of his arms behind him. Until then, I believe I can beat the two of you one-handed. <laughs> he sets himself in place, and uh, Ace, you can tell he's waiting for you. <laughs> okay, I see how it is. So, you're not gonna wait for a golden boy to show up. You're just gonna let us both tucker, like tucker each other out, and then he's gonna come <clears> in and stab <throat> us when we're like the weakest. Do you believe the golden knight between our little trio to be a threat enough that even us at our most tired cannot take him? Hmm. Ace thinks about <laughs> that for a second. <laughs> well, you see, do you even really know what he can do? Absolutely. Mm. He, he was about to say, absolutely not. He, he pauses. He's like, during our match earlier, I saw a hint of something. But for the most part, I am mostly unaware of his abilities. I mean, if you're so certain. Uh, and so what he's <laughs> going to do is uh, he's just going to uh, approach. And I'm just going to do the, do, the, do the good old classic. I want to keep Venter moving yeah. as much as possible because fuck this old man. Um <laughs> Uh, so, uh, classic Big Bang, uh, so that's oh, what yeah. roll to do. Yes. 25. 25? Okay. Yeah, Venter's yeah. gonna, Venter's gonna 
We're gonna drop. Ooh, lovely. Okay. Twenty-three. You beat it. <clears throat> yeah. So. Uh, that's... So. Yeah. Tell me what you do. Uh, I'm going to do the asshole thing, and I'm going to blast him this way through the oh, boxes. Yeah, yeah. So oh, you're going to send him down there? <laughs> Boom! He disappears into the area below. Mm -hmm. All right, be careful, Riddle. He might just appear behind you or something. I... <laughs> she, like, she like sort of squints at you. I mean, it's an effective tactic, certainly. Yeah. Uh, so, what's the plan? Um, survive... <laughs> He's definitely not worried about me. Uh, she sort of like looks over at you. <laughs> She's like, oh, his mistake, I guess. I mean, um, look, if I was him, I'd kill you first. But that's just like a personal opinion. That's a personal opinion? I'm walking over there. <laughs> yeah, I passed my turn, Riddle. <laughs> you, uh, you, uh, you watch as she moves over, and Riddle is going to roll to die. Set herself. Um, and, uh, she's going to build up, uh, some good old boosty. Uh, she prepares herself, uh, for a counterattack. Okay. Um, and, uh, AC doesn't come back. <laughs> there is simply silence for a moment. The turn ends, and, uh, he, he, he doesn't re-enter the battlefield. Okay. He's doing something. What do we, uh, what do we do? <laughs> I mean, we can, like, wait a second. I mean, moving would probably be good. Like, what if he's, like, yeah. grabbing, like, a giant bomb or something, like, or, like, a car to hit you with, or... <laughs> Maybe a car to hit you with. <laughs> I, I don't think cars work on me. <laughs> You you wait for a moment and it's it's the funniest thing. And then can the both of you give me a roll to die? Ah oh, yeah, sure. Twenty one. Twenty one. Ooh, that's a that's a good enough roll. Uh, Riddle, that is not a good enough roll. Um. Uh. Ace, your body arcs up as uh, CK Sir just lets out a call of, move. Yeah, uh, he's just gonna go over here and just grab Riddle by like the scruff of the neck and just kind of like <laughs> skirt on over here to where she was standing. You run, you run over here and you jump as the area beneath your feet starts to ah, creak down and fall away. And uh, give me another roll to die. Okay, twenty. 20. Okay. This okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, uh wait, will... that would be, it would be a clash since he's blue. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give me a clash. Give me a clash. Uh, okay. So, roll to do. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like that. that yeah, and then he, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's, uh, the, the, the 18 is for you. The crit 20 is for Riddle. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Okay. It's... You uh, you see a you see a split moment of a memory come to the come to the surface of your mind. It uh, it blossoms up as um, you uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. you remember something from a life you never lived. Uh, it is a memory passed to you via the pyromancer of laughter. It's a vision that uh, comes to mind clearly, strongly. This took a funny turn immediately. Uh, okay. You feel a connection to this man that no longer is. His memories blossom in front of your eyes like fireworks. You think about what he experienced. You think about his goals, his dreams, his aspirations, the shock of memory that travels through your body. And you feel one sensation spread through your body more keenly than anything. 
over here, there is a vault on the far side of the derelict, a room for ancient and discarded relics. Yep. And within that room, <laughs> within that room, Ace. You always wanted that fucking car. <laughs> you always wanted that fucking car. And at this exact moment, that crit 20. <laughs> Something flies from the depths of the derelict. Blinkers on. It flares through the air and flies straight at Riddle. With a screech, she looks down at it as the car from the vault flies between the gap. And narrowly, the two of you dodge out of the way, bracing yourselves atop one of uh, Riddle's ESP bubbles. She's like, see? I told you, cars wouldn't work on me. And then through the ESP bubble, two hands reach up, one broken, one still intact, and they grab your ankles as Victor pulls you into the darkness below. Hey, uh. <laughs> hey, Tiny and Brennan! <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> you ready for your fight? We're gonna just We're fighting? Run... <clears throat> oh yeah, absolutely, probably. Okay, good. <clears throat> so, uh, here's how this session's gonna go. We are rotating around through the various combats. Uh, as it as it goes, we're just gonna play it out until shit happens. Let's go. Uh, start of the first round. Uh, Rio preps herself. She reaches back, and uh, everybody gets a free roll to die. Start the combat. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Am I still wounded? Let me see. Uh, you, yes. So yeah, basically, yeah, you're... that's the weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, you should only be rocking three attributes at the moment. Um, let me let me grab oh. you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Basil, you are a you are a normal reflection. Uh, a re... you're a normal I'm reflection John power reflection. level. Yeah, warrior right now. Uh, you you are not your reflection. You are the girl. So uh, give me another roll to do, or roll to die. Okay. Ah, oh, lovely. Perfect. Okay. Uh, right, Rio. Okay. Uh, I believe Willow. Yes, you get the first go. All right. Uh, Willow, obviously, activating Grasp the Earth. Naturally. Not playing around. <clears throat> All right, Rio. I always wanted to see if I gotten strong enough to beat you. <laughs> Oh, did you now? That's delightful. Mm. Uh, she, like, turns around and uh, actually, like, takes a moment to let uh, Gnashing Maw down on the ground. And uh, she's like, if the communications throughout the derelict are co correct, I believe one of Opia's agents should have just fallen. She reaches down and picks up the uh, picks up Gnashing Maw again. Just like old times, eh, Willow? <laughs> the shittiest smile you've seen in your life. <laughs> that is not funny. <laughs> Willow is going to run up and punch Rio as hard as she can. Let's fucking go. You roll up, reel back, and give me a roll to do. All right. Uh, so, moved. I know how Turn to Earth works. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. Did, did it go? Oh. oh, whoops. Sorry, Basil, I chose a swing for you. <laughs> How Instead dare you? for myself. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you something free here. So, um... Uh, you, uh, tell me, tell me how you're hitting her. Willow is specifically aiming for Nash and Maul and Ooh. knocking the weapon out of her hands. Yo, okay. Um, Nashing Maul, you actually managed to strike Nashing Maul. In this case, I'm going to reduce the damage she takes, but, uh, send it, send it fucking flying. As Nashing Maul 
flies through the oh, wall wait, back wait. there. Before, yeah. I'm yeah. not making it go though over there. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sending it to Basil. <laughs> Yo, let's <laughs> fucking go! Okay, okay, Oh, I okay. suppose we're having a silly time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm going to be using uh, my new, one of my new gifts. Um, oh, oh. Rody run. I'm giving <laughs> Basil two turns. Fucking <laughs> awesome. Okay, okay. Um, we Basil. Basil, Nashing Moth flies out of Rio's hand and lands in yours. It bears down on you as you feel the force of it almost drive you into the ground. Basil, give me a roll to do. Oh, I thought I was going to have to cut off her arm for this. <laughs> Shut. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you managed to beat it. Oh, for the crit 20, I know what it's going to start doing. Okay, okay. So you still beat it and you maintain control as you grab it. And instead of Rio dual wielding, you are now the one dual wielding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you pick out both of your axes and your body weighs down as Nashing Ma binds to your arm. And you see almost like a, uh, you, f you feel a voice from deep inside you. It's uh, ideal or Kali. It's impossible to tell the difference between the two at this point. Uh, <clears throat> let's out a call of, oh, we are the same. Uh, almost a black chitin starts to spread over the arm that Gnashing Maw is attached to, and it starts to dig into your skin. It spreads up to your forearm and just waits. <clears throat> so, uh, now you can wield Gnashing Maw. <laughs> I can cope with this. <laughs> so you're going to roadie run your turn over to Basil? Yes. Lovely. Okay, Basil, you're go. Okay, uh, Basil is going to uh, summon Collapse in cannon yeah. form. Oh, lovely, okay. And she is immediately going to ignite to place six orbs surrounding Rio, so she has nowhere to go. <laughs> uh, red orbs? Um, or no. Pink orbs. Because she has red. She so does, yeah. let's do pink orbs. Pink orbs, okay. Let's go. Oh, those are the Yorgles. Uh, there we go. Pink. <laughs> Reset. Look, Look at them. Look at Look at those balls. Look at, <laughs> look at the fucking Yoko Taro ass balls. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, okay, okay. You uh you you send Rio to the uh the bullet hell as you thump, 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 fire. And Basil, you get another turn. Oh, good. Um, yeah, roadie run. <laughs> collapsed. <clears throat> yes. Your story is based on her story, correct? She motions to Gnashing Maw in her other hand. <clears throat> yes, it is. If you are able to understand her, you will understand me. Um, that's the thing. I don't know if it's for me to understand. I think you should finish this story. And hey, then she's yo. going to command Collapse <laughs> to devour Gnashing Maw. <laughs> oh, oh, Collapse. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so this is, uh, give me uh, give me another roll to do. Okay. Okay, okay. You, you have Gnashing Maw open oh, up. Oh, sorry, and that's also yeah. uh, plus four. <clears throat> plus four, okay, okay. okay. I'm okay. resonating. You sure fucking are resonating. Uh, so, uh, so Basil just sent you all the help she could, Willow, and uh, behind you, you just hear crunching, grinding sounds as uh, something occurs just out of sight. We're going to focus on Willow's perspective here because I believe uh, not only would the description of this be uh, a little, a little fucking horrific, um, uh, I, I believe the horror is best preserved as an uncertainty. Um, <clears throat> so, behind you, Willow, you, um, you hear a crunching, grinding noise. As you close the distance, you punched Rio's weapon. She swings it as you're at your head, and as you duck low under it, almost like a boxer, one of your eyes darts backwards and looks over at Basil, who just functionally fed a demonic arm to a reflection using its fuel. You look over at Basil's body, and what is there now appears to be almost... It's a fused mesh of different fleshes 
that come together and interweave. It's like if you hybrid every great variety of tree in the world all together at once, they overwhelm one another. Our body physically replaced and all you see is the vague outline of the face where that tree now stands. Basil, you have been consumed by the chitin. Basil. <laughs> yeah. Where you are now. <laughs> oh, no. I think I did a wrong a ro thing faster. No, 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 no. You did, you did, you did great, my friend. Jeep. It's a always lot, right. A lot of stuff's about to happen, my friends. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's go. Um, over here, uh, this one. I said I wasn't going to make a new pog. <laughs> a pog for the horrors. Um, okay. <clears throat> Basil, you're here. <laughs> <clears throat> Basil, uh, you feel at this moment utterly cut off from every single other Basil, including your reflections. You are for the first time utterly alone. But that doesn't actually fully explain the situation. You feel a hot, damp presence all around you, like like you're in the depths of the depths of a jungle or like in a, like a, on the seashore uh, on a burning hot day. It the, the the moisture saturation is fucking disgusting here. And something aches through your bones. It feels like almost the ground underneath you writhes and moves with every single step you take. You can tell right now the world that you're seeing is one that you touched on just vaguely when you were communicating with Collapse of the Living. You are looking at the world before. You are looking at something truly ancient here, and this place feels more alive than you are. What do you do? Um, this is the world before, huh? The world before, 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 before. It, this is an ancient place. Truly ancient. Well, I guess I'm going to have a look around. <laughs> you take a look around and as you do, you, um, you see something over on a nearby, uh, nearby rock. It sort of strikes your vision for a split second as you're like, huh, that's weird. It almost stands out amidst all of the darkness as um as something unique. Um you can tell that whatever this structure is, it's not from this place. It's likely something that you brought in with you. You see, um, tiny stitched doll sitting on top of the rock. Oh, I remember you. It remains motionless. It does nothing. This came with me. It's it foreign to this you. place, correct? It does not belong here. Hmm. Is there any chance that there's something about this tiny doll that resonates with this place that I'm in? It resonates with you, and, well, you're part of this place now. It feels like you've been swallowed whole. Therefore, this thing could be a part of you if you willed it. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the lead of uh, Ideal and give myself another resonance. <laughs> <laughs> you take the lead of Ideal, you give yourself another resonance. Lovely. And I'm going to add this... Uh, this aspect of myself to myself okay so basil while you're in this state here's how we're gonna play this you are going to be reclaiming parts of yourself slowly and figuring out what happened here and why as you do you will uh gain access to ideals powers a little bit at a time but as for the moment you are as before john reflection <laughs> 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 you are alone, cut off of, from the source of other basilisk kids, and you are at a place where no one else can reach. So, so I only have myself and yes. my what I would have, right? Exactly. Um, can I use my ESP? 
Uh, yes, you can personally mutate. My no, my new ESP. Your new ESP. Go on, explain. Yeah. Well, you see, um, this Basil, Body Basil, has yeah. an ESP of her own, which is Forgotten Demonology, and I don't oh, want to be alone let's anymore. Go. Oh, you don't want to be alone anymore? So you're summoning yeah. a demon into this place. Okay, okay, okay. Give me a friend. <laughs> I, Brennan. <laughs> I love this so much. Thank you for giving me a for giving me a goblin to play <laughs> in this horror scenario. Okay, okay, okay. So um, you uh you reach your hand out and fire starts to lick around your fingers as you remember ancient incantations that should be lost to your mind, and you invoke your ESP, and as you do, you summon. This one. A being that boom flares. I was hoping it was this yeah! guy. <laughs> he pulls himself together as as if from the darkness and the flame itself. You demand the assistance of something, and it's almost like an ancient contract ignites inside of yourself. This is an ability granted to you. You remembered your time in the church. You remember the privileges granted to you via the court of compulsion. And this figure looks around, actually a little confused. And it tries to almost intonate for a moment. Oh, hey there. Now there's two of us that don't belong here. You can do it. You've got a mouth. <laughs> What do you think of this demon? I think he's cute. <laughs> ah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> he is cute. She squishes his face. <laughs> you squish the demon's face. Uh, you you remember something about demons, how they're informed by the perspective of others. In informing this individual that he is cute, he therefore became cute. Uh, his... <laughs> His, his almost putty-like face starts to contort beneath your hands. <laughs> ah. Well, do you want to go on an adventure, my cute little demon friend? What do you expect him to say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his, his eye goes from actually one, one of his sockets to the other, and it almost alights on you, and he goes, Yes, I, 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 I'd like that. <laughs> Do you really like that, or is that just because I'm willing you to like that? Because I really uh, would like for you, I'm willing you to be your own yeah. person. <laughs> you're willing You're willing this person to have autonomy. Do you have any expectations for what that would look like? Uh, no. <laughs> no expectations. Feel free to attack autonomy. me. Uh, okay. Uh, left with the great question of... What does blank expectation and infinite freedom looks like? Uh, the random stack. I've been there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I get you. <laughs> the random static chaos of the universe uh, will be what determines this person's actions. And as uh, the first informing action, uh, they, they turn and they look and they start to actually sniff the air. It's, uh, it's a gesture that's deeply familiar to you. Mm -hmm. And they start to scamper off in this direction. <laughs> Good idea. Let's go that way. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you disappear into the darkness as you feel the eyes pressing in on all around you. Hey, Tiny, that was Basil's turn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, you're charging up your second form. You're, you are literally doing that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Basil is uh, Basil's in the... Um, Basil's in the fuck. <laughs> right and uh, you you watch her uh, disappear, and uh, Rio's like, she pauses. She thinks she's really trying to act smug about this one, but she doesn't beat the fifteen. And you actually hear Rio like visibly intonate all the huster, uh, 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 all the all the bluster aside. Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what happened either. Oh, <laughs> uh, Willow, roll to die for me. <laughs> Hold on. I am going to uh, oh, ignite. No, you clash. You clash with me. Oh, wait, really I clash. Yeah, okay. yeah, clash with me really quick. 
Okay, okay, okay. Willow, what are you doing? How are you turning? Rio just tries to sucker punch you, just straight up. Like, <laughs> you start doing this, and uh, this is what you and Basil just deprived Rio of. I'm gonna be real. If Nashing Ma didn't just turn into a nightmare tree, she would have spent the entire combat trying to regain this gift. But she has double Nashing Ma. She just gets to attack twice and basically stacks all of her abilities two times. Now she only stacks it once. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. When uh, Rio tries to punch Willow, yeah. Willow doesn't flinch or move, and Willow kind of smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Seem, it seems that your information's out of date. You got a new reflection, you see. <laughs> when my feet's on the ground, you can't hurt me. <laughs> and I punch her back. Boom! And because I'm standing still, every unspent movement sends her flying. <laughs> Willow, you send her flying backwards as she hits one of the orbs. It pops and the rest begin to almost autonomously follow her as they bear down through the area. She flies back, hits a wall, explodes through it and goes to the other side. And Willow, for doing this, I unlock the secret stage. Um, you watch as Rio tumbles through the wall and as she does, <clears throat> You explode into a hidden section of the derelict. Nice, I got the wall break. You got the wall <laughs> break. Uh, you you go through as bam. <clears throat> you explode through the wall after her as she rolls end over end, hits a crate, flies backwards, and lands on the conveyor belt. Uh, hello. <laughs> I would like to reveal this setting, Logic Slab. Oh. <clears throat> Logic Slab, a hidden lab full of a variety of goodies. Conveyor belts. Any creature that begins or ends their turn on the conveyor belt is immediately moved 10 squares in the direction the belt is traveling in. Then, Long Dead Arms Factory. By accessing the computer uh, and spending an action, gain one use of Long Dead Arms Factory. Lock out a dice for original use. You remember that ability that Logic could use to print demons? Yes. <clears throat> You look over at the computer here as Rio picks herself up and she's like, <clears throat> my information might be out of date, but when it comes to this area particularly, I've been granted all the privileges of a stranger. You're functionally fighting me in my own domain. You look over at the computer screen as something interesting happens on it. You can tell, even from a distance, this thing is whirring, and there's a large, uh, a large comical, um, uh, like, like lock and key pattern on it to show, yeah, this shit's locked up. And uh, you can tell, spread throughout it, after encountering logic even for a little bit, there are multiple holes that tendrils are supposed to lock in to make this thing even operable with a keyboard on top that allows a normal human to normal human hands to operate it if logic has uh, provided his own tentacle print and as you look at the machine something actually happens it's just a whir and shift and there is an animation that plays across the screen as the lock opens and the computer terminal is left uh, completely accessible Rio turns over looks at it for a second and then looks at you and is like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Willow, you get the feeling, even from beyond the grave, a logic just unlocked his hard drive for you. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he looks over at you and then starts to run towards the computer. Willow also runs towards the You guys start fucking blitzing towards it. Oh my god, okay. That's where gonna uh that's where you guys are gonna end your turn. Jackson, Bryn, are you here? Yep. Aye aye. It's time. Oh, I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking time, gamers. <clears throat> <laughs> Welcome to Hell on Earth. <laughs> okay. So, for all of you guys caught up inside of Showtime, uh, our, uh, our, 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 uh, the rules are very simple. Um, right now, you all have to roll for the determination of which rolls are doled out. 
you are forced to act out a scenario in conjunction with Showtime. Showtime's rules are straightforward. <clears throat> Basically, play along with the game, or if you act out of character or against the intention of the character role that you've been given, you will be uh, granted an infraction. A, a large infraction, for example, acting entirely out of character, results in one wound. Uh, anything else costs 66 damage, 3d6, etc. So, I want you all to roll a raw d20. No, I'm going to reveal the rolls first. Okay. Mm. Okay. So, if we're acting out Agent Danger, um, let me pull up my sheet. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta, I gotta get what Agent Danger has. Uh, this was... There we go. <clears throat> All right. So, Agent Danger is a classic spy movie, positively the pinnacle of the genre. Um, we are, uh, we need, uh, we need the spy, naturally. We need the femme fatale, the, like, main heroine of the movie, uh, who's romantically has a, like, on-again, off-again relationship with the spy. Um, then we need two goons, a bumbling detective, and an evil mastermind. Um, I believe in this scene. Oh, right. Point straight ahead. <clears throat> it's a car chase or some other equivalent. Evil mastermind's up in the helicopter providing support. The goons are in the back. The spy's in the front car. Let's pick out our roles, everyone. So, everyone roll me a uh, 1d20. Pixie. CEO 5. John Geist. Compulsion. Okay. <clears throat> oh, Robin! It looks like you're picking huh? last! <laughs> we John. pick? <clears throat> oh, yeah. No, whoever rolled highest gets, uh, gets the first pick across the board, which looks over at John Geist. So I'm excited <laughs> to see what he picks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're it's like, dodgeball. Thanks. He like he stops and looks over at Rob and he's like, "Hey, being a goon ain't that bad." Uh, okay. Um, he sort of like taps his foot. I feel I could be a little presumptuous to like pick myself as like the evil mastermind of a spy. Uh, yeah, fuck it, femme fatale. <laughs> <laughs> he locks in the on again, off again relationship. <laughs> um, then next would be. Pixie! Pixie's like, uh, I'll be the evil mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next would then be, um, let me go down. It is compulsion. Oh my god, compulsion like, hmm. A bumbling detective. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, next would be, uh, Bryn, who does Liam choose? You've got goon, spy. Uh, you've got goon, spy, and goon. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two goons uh, are the spy. Well, I mean, Liam, Liam's going to go with uh, familiarity at first. He's going to pick a goon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'll be the spy then. <laughs> Robin, you are left with goon too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that Let's sounds go. like a low pressure roll. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit, it really is Team Geist. And uh, you guys, good luck. <laughs> like, half waves. It's like, okay, so we gotta get to our positions. <clears throat> Pixie, like, uh, Liam, can you throw me over to one of those helicopters? <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> Rose to the helicopter. <laughs> okay. So, in this case, uh, I'm going to rearrange you guys. I'm bringing you down the map. And, <clears throat> uh, Compulsion had chose the bumbling, bumbling detective, putting her in the back car. <clears throat> uh, these two are the spy and femme fatale, who will be in the front car. <laughs> you guys 
chose to be goons, <laughs> which will put you in the back car and or uh, in the middle car and the helicopter, respectively. <clears throat> Uh, Pixie sort of, like, comes in on your comms and is like, <clears throat> Okay, I've assumed my position. In terms of functionality, remember, everyone, our goal here is to defeat compulsion. She set herself up in the singular role that lets her uh, functionally fight all of us. So we've got to find a way to, like, take her down while following the movie script. It's the job of you two to chase after the spy and the femme fatale while also taking out compulsion a little secretively. Can you handle that? I look at Liam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> looks looks at Robin. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> we. <laughs> and we got rem it. and remember you got to you got to goon it up at the same time. <laughs> Don't worry, I had the perfect example. Oi, oi, Captain! I'll go! I'll for you! <laughs> okay, okay, now call me boss. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, boss! <laughs> it's right, boss! <laughs> you, you all prep yourselves as, uh, as up here CEO 5's like, Okay, everyone! Then on three, two, one, it is showtime! He claps his hands as the cars explode down the highway <laughs> in, in the depths of the derelict simultaneously. <laughs> the, welcome to the world's most insane combat. Um, uh, down here. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, Roma, are you here? It is fine if no. Let's see if I got. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. Right here. <clears throat> there is a streak of light. <clears throat> As someone enters the derelict and moves deeper inside, she darts forward, a flash, a teleport, and then moves on. Over here. There is now a testament to the battle being fought, and even off in the distance, there are individuals doing battle over a computer terminal for the rest of Logic's factory. As the camera pans upwards and moves its way deeper into the derelict, it moves across Compulsion's floor and over into the realm of death. The camera plunges into the depths down below as... That streak of black, white, and green moves her way towards the destination. But contained beneath the derelict is a location that very few people go. It is a location that Venter holds close to his heart and has only allowed individuals such as Nectar who maintains the place, and the pristine one, who you simply cannot keep out of locations such as this, to access. Ace, you pick yourself up off the ground for a moment as you look around at this place that has not seen light in quite some time. You watch as various ruptures through the area, likely caused by the fighting, cause flame to leak out, dying the area in an almost ugly blue. You feel a deep sense of familiarity from here, but it's strange. It's an unusual situation. It feels like you just wandered into a mausoleum, something that you from Kravnir would be familiar with, but... Those cultures aren't practiced. Uh, your culture isn't practiced in the rest of the world. Uh -huh. You see more of those structures that you saw when you entered the flame of creation sitting in front of you, dotting the landscape. 
and as your vision adjusts to the darkness, you watch as the area beneath the derelict, a location that another you went to once, slopes away into a garbage dump deeper down, but all around you on all sides, those gravestones go out and out and out, and you realize you rest atop a mountain of graves. The mm. pyromancer of death actually stands sort of pressed against a wall waiting there for a moment as he looks over at you uh, waiting for you guys to get your bearings I figured I'd give you a chance to adjust to the darkness that's kind of you this place is a little dusty though <laughs> he nods I apologize I haven't allowed Stefano to clean it up Oh, wow. <laughs> ah, the derelict's wonderful butler. <laughs> There's a butler down here? He nods. <laughs> Damn, you hear that, Riddle? <laughs> Riddle sort of squints. She's like, Verona's out here killing our maid budget. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's probably better we don't have one of those then. <laughs> he, uh, he waits, steadies himself, and he's like, This is a silly question, but spare me a little bit of sentimentality in this moment. He, like, gestures with his head over to the pile of graves. That evoke anything in you? I've seen stuff like that before. When I was in the flame of creation. He tilts his head slightly. Uh, from an experience you had in this world, then. Hmm. Well, I'm not really sure how much you can say of, of it being this world, or... Yeah, I got him. <laughs> Riddle's expression lights up. <laughs> All right, then. You feel like his face falls behind the mask, where there was a light smile before it. Uh, he sets his jaw. In that case, it is true. Death is absolute, and you are truly lost. A shame. He uh, readies himself. Let me. However, tell, mm, let me tell you what I've told plenty of people before. I'm not the person you think I am. Okay. Any previous me's that you may have encountered, any person that you look upon my face and see me as simply a vessel of someone from the past, they're long gone. Maybe the reason you blacked out is because your head is so far up your ass you can't see what's in front of you. <laughs> Venter's, Venter's form stays there as you feel, it's, it's funny, it feels like you almost lift a weight off of his shoulders. In that case, truly, then, I am facing you as the pyromancer of death, and you are a skeleton of World 12. The World 12 part is kind of pointless, don't you think? Hmm. He nods. In that case, I will administer my duty. Come. He sets his stance, and you prepare for a fucking battle! Yeah, nice job putting me in a map that I can't knock him out of bounds, asshole. <laughs> and with that, we call our first break. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. You Let's shouldn't have blown go. your knock out of bounds load in the past couple of sessions. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta hide your tech. <laughs> he's on the, bro, he's on the mountain of graves. You send him off, he comes back with even more sadness. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the infinite azure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Uh, use the bathroom. Get yourselves ready. We're doing we're doing combats. But first, yeah. Hello, I chat. But first, chat. Hey, chat. How's it going? Do you like merch? Perhaps <laughs> reflection merch. Well, what? do we have something for you? Uh, because Mask has cooked something up, uh, specifically uh, to support Mask and also get yourself some nice little merch. Bam! We got we got Cal keychain. 
little cow thing. You like I like cow? to call them cow chains. Cow chains, right? Yeah. And or these are trapped. only up for a couple more days, right? The pre-order ends on March 21st, mm -hmm. 2024. 2024. <laughs> and uh, it's in chat. I'm linking it. So if you want... How dare you sneak attack me while my internet was bugging out? So if you want these wonderful cow things, uh, buy them. And you Get do them. want them. And for the YouTube chat, who will also be seeing this, I'll be make I'll be linking this in the description. So please, you for the love it? of God, check the description. Jesus, <laughs> please. Check it, it's right there. It's just a little menu you have to click. <laughs> Every time I tell people like, oh man, it's in the description, everyone's like, where? Where are things? And I'm like, bro. The description is like an abyss. It, it is. I people people always come to the server just like, oh man, dude. Wait, I haven't seen the reflection list, and I'm like, bro, they're in the episode description. I've even said in the episodes <laughs> that they are in the description, but people still just don't know. Yeah, Maybe but the further you go down into stuff. the description, the further you go down into the description, the more it changes you. <laughs> yeah. Just like the coda. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, the description is the thing between the screen and the comments. You're thinking of the comments right now. No. No. It's all one thing. You have to understand. <laughs> it's all connected. There is no separation on a web page. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, there I've... are. If you look in the HTML, there literally is. Yeah. I've bought my Cal keychain. I've also bought my Cal keychain. <laughs> you did, you didn't have to! I want it. <laughs> I'm going to put it above my bed and it will bless my day when I wake up. <laughs> Mystic PH says, look up Wandering Mask on Kofi if you can't find the description. I, this was a very dumb decision of me. I put it under my artist name, Christopher King, not Wandering Mask, because that would have made sense because for you're... consistent branding. No, it's, and because, I it's because you're a king. king. You beat me to it. Yeah, <laughs> I beat you to it. I heard you trying to get to it, but I took yeah, it from you because it's mine. Damn, damn it, I'm being attacked on multiple sides. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I hope you are. I also yeah, love the announcement to... being played, uh, us doing the announcement while this fucking hype ass music is playing. Yeah. This is the last rock music. Anyway, get your cow keychain today. <laughs> so far, session's been pretty chill, pretty laid back. Hey, yeah, kind of hey, based. yeah, chat, you, YouTube question. Uh, uh, what role would you be in Agent Danger? Oh, uh, yeah. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel confident that I would be an unnamed or minor character who dies in the first fight scene. I'd be Agent Danger. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be the last guy before the actual bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, like the, like the cool villain know who doesn't yeah. like get the monologues, but is like has the cool combat hook. That's yeah. I'm the I'm the hacker that doesn't actually like the writers very clearly wrote the hacker character to just say tech buzzwords <laughs> they don't yeah. actually have to talk about real hacking <laughs> don't worry i uploaded the html into the mainframe if i only take a few more web seconds the web page will upload itself onto the ethernet yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. so how you doing chat hi chat hi chat Everyone having a fun time. Actually, I'm, I'm going to use the restroom, actually, now that I've already shelled beer back. Good luck. Thank you. Go. You, yes, please. You'll need care it. For yourself. Get drinks. Chad, you should all get drinks and stuff. Yeah. He's so I hydrated, though. Re, re fill my water and maybe get a little yeah. soda as a treat. Yeah. Everybody go sustain yourself. My once a day soda. I, I got a couple of. I, I had an apple. and Well, it's a pear. Well, it's a. It's a. Store Apples and pears, while similar, are not the same thing, Mask. Well, it's it's a fruit that, as a kid, I thought was called an apple pear, but it's it. The grocery store st stores said it was an Asian pear. It's the one that's like oh, okay. very lightly flavored and has. I wouldn't be surprised if you could crossbreed an apple and a pear. That right? Grow them in the same place. Like, I'm gonna look this up later and see if apple pear is a thing that exists or if I was no, just like, fooled as a child. No, Asian pears are different and very apple-y. 
Yeah. You're, they're you're, like big and I, yellow I was going to say your parents were playing a trick on you, but no. <laughs> no, no, like it's it's reasonable because they're watery, they're not very strongly flavored, and they're shaped like an apple. So like pears are pears are just like crappy apples. <laughs> pears, pears are, are like, like pears are like apples from the Shinigami realm. <laughs> wow, that is the best description of anything. That's what they are. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Imagine if you only had pears for your entire life. Oh, and then you had somebody gave you an apple and you were like, this is this is an apple in our world. And you're like, wow. <laughs> no, pears don't slap. Pears slap if you have nothing else. I like I like canned pears. Like, that's really not the same kind of animal. Yeah, right? that's just syrup and juice. And sugar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really yeah. I, I, I realize you're talking about pears, but as I was walking up, I thought you were talking about bears slapping people. <laughs> what kind of bears? Two of them. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> oh, man. Good, good fucking job, squad. Like, good job keeping it extremely compelling, literally on all sides. I'm uh, shocked that you were prepared for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, man, if this happens, and it's happening earlier than I expected is the best way to put it. I didn't expect to have it, so it's really <laughs> Tiny's fault. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to cut off the hose arm. But... <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that she still has both of her arms to slap fight Willow over who gets to type on a computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the moment in a in a movie where there's one gun and it slides yeah. across the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Turn two is gonna be a little insane because yeah, turn two is gonna be a little insane. But turn one's been so normal. Turn yeah, one's mean? been so normal. Uh, <laughs> it will have rippling effects into turn two and beyond. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 I know. I know how I'm gonna do this. Um, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna start tackling stuff in an order. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's how we're doing it. Uh, Roma, are you here? Roma, you not. might be muted. Oh. 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 Or it's just not present, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll chill we'll chill one more sec. Yeah. Whoa. Hey Jay, who would you be in uh Agent Danger? I'm back. Welcome back, uh I'm bumbling back. detective. Compulsion's taste is uh flawless. It's <laughs> true <laughs> Damn her <laughs> Okay. Uh, Roma, you good? You good for a scene? Which one? Uh, you can uh, tell me in the GM chat. <laughs> this. Yes. Okay, cool. <clears throat> okay. In that case, we're just gonna go through the turn order, um, and uh, we'll 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 play it out. Good luck. Okay. Man. Let's fucking roll. Uh, so. Let me grab some Pyromancer music. Oh, this one. Okay. <clears throat> So, the second that this squad makes it to the height of the derelict, they start to pick up speed. <clears throat> Running one after the other, Liz takes the lead, uh, charging straight down the path, Mike following behind. Stater's so like, Hey, Mike, you're up. He lets out a call. His Mike's like, yeah. She darts to the side and runs up uh, a nearby pipe moving in this direction. Isaac turns his head, twitching an eye almost lazily to the side as he holds out one hand, 
uh, as a gravity well of ESP forms in front of Mike. Mike feels her body caught in the air as Seder leans forward, and there is a moment that there is a flash around one of his hands, a reflection flaring to life as it reaches out into the depths of the gravity well, pulls on it, and almost rips it apart like taffy, pulling it back towards him. Whoa. Uh, Isaac, like, looks over. Uh, Mike runs ahead as List throws down a line of swords, allowing the penguin to sprint past. She touches down on the ground and begins to weave, running in this direction. She's like, uh, counting on you, Mike. Yeah. She runs straight ahead, and this is where she stops dead as someone stands directly in front of her. She sort of pauses as Stefano, last line of defense. Hi, Mike. A figure sort of stops and she's like, hey, um, am I lucky enough that you'll let me pass? Um, unfortunately, it was by my luck that the GK let you pass, from what I can tell, so you might have to stay here with me for a moment. She sort of pauses. Uh, can I ask why? Uh, what, what do you, what do you get out of this? Um, he sort of thinks. I... I suppose it's simply what I'm supposed to do. Um, Does that make sense? She nods. Would you do what you're supposed to do, even if it results in your death? I mean... He sort of gets a smile on his face and he goes, Isn't that what it was always going to do? Mike sort of pauses. She, like, looks down the way. It's so close, within arm's reach, but she can't beat the person in front of her. She sort of focuses in and takes another step forward. If... She tries to figure out how to say this gently. And then actually feels a pang travel through her body, something that she's been actively repressing. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm indelicate with my words. I recently lost my sister, so I think my opinions have gotten a little stronger about this. I she did hear, are you all right? She like looks down the way. Um, She like shakes her head, I don't, I don't know how to begin answering that question. But he sort of nods. Based on what I've learned from Argos, what I've learned from Theo, and based on my own creation, do you think the people here would create you just to die? He sort of thinks. No, I don't think that's the kind of people they are, though that is the kind of situation we are in. Mm. So, I guess my question is, um, who are you fighting for? Sort of thinks for a minute how to answer this question. I suppose I'm fighting for a great many things. Who are you fighting for? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Mike, uh... Oh, boy. Mike feels... Mike sort of feels that question weigh somewhat more heavily on her as, um... She pauses. She reaches down to her chest and she feels the device that's been handed over to her. A moment of realization uh, and a weight that she's been trying to keep off of her shoulders. Um, I'm fighting for everyone who gave me a chance to be here, standing here right now. 
I'm fighting for everyone who sacrificed something. I'm fighting for everybody who's fighting right now. And I'm fighting for every single world that burned before now. I'm fighting so we don't have to do this anymore. He sort of appears that it gives him a bit of perspective on his own situation. And he sort of looks over at her and he's like, I suppose then that includes everyone here, even the ones that are fighting you? Oh, fun question. Give me a, give me a roll to die and a roll to do. One. You love to see it. As you try to understand, and your, your intention here was to understand Mike's intent. So, with a one, Mike sort of thinks to herself, as session's not ending, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's earned. She, uh, she actually sort of, uh, pauses, and, uh, she, like, nods unabashedly. Yeah, pretty much. Anyone that we can spare on the way through. Honestly, nobody's making it easy, but I know everybody who's out there fighting. They're unlucky, they're fighting Ace, but for the most part, I think people are paired up with, like, Basil or Willow. They're trustworthy at this point. Um, Argos is going to be coming here soon, and he wouldn't do anything like uh, executing people or anything like that. Um, she, her expression genuinely softens visibly. Uh, the person I really look up to has a vision of a world where everybody can live. I don't think I'm really strong enough to create something like that, but I can try my best in that direction. And everybody here is trying their best. From what I understand, everybody's been locked into these positions for so long. These long-drawn battle lines and... Now it's sort of left up to weird outliers like me, Willow, or Ace. So, yeah, I guess I'm not, I'm not really interested in the idea of walking through and getting revenge on the demons or anything. I'm not really interested in getting revenge on Exulansis or even Eternity himself, even though... He just did what he did. She sort of like pauses and looks over. I'm gonna take the most efficient path. If that's forgiveness, I'll take it. If it's violence, so be it, I guess. But regardless, it's a future I want to fight for. I see. Um, could I ask you for a favor then? She nods. Uh, she's probably not going to make it hard the way that everyone else is. But the situation's going to make it very hard for her. Mike looks over and down the way, the direction that you're facing. I... see. <laughs> Mike's expression smiles. Mm. You said you were fighting for a lot of things, right? Hmm. Her too? He nods. Our okay. answers are particularly similar once again. Mike's expression visibly softens, and she's like, Okay. <sighs> In that case, I certainly can't step on your feelings here. She takes a step forwards, sort of nods to you, and then runs off in this direction one foot after the other approaching the chamber of the queen. Stefano, you find yourself standing there, a strange sensation washing over you. It's funny. At this point, do you feel you've done your duty? I mean, can a butler truly have done his duty if he has not served the guest tea? <laughs> <laughs> You set yourself ready. As the sons of violence grow throughout the derelict, but one figure darts ahead into the darkness of the chamber beyond.
Oh boy. Okay. Who next? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey Willow. Hey Willow. Hey Willow. Hey Willow. You are uh, you are fighting over a over a console if you're there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Hey Willow, I turned myself into a tree. <laughs> I'm tree yourself right now. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, Jay? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to yeah. use my free action to move the orbs into this room. Oh, lovely. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm, not I'm still there. helping. You you are still helping as a tree. And Basil, Basil, I'm going to... And normally this is the part where I also give the Basil trapped inside the tree a turn. I, uh, I've got a, I've got another thing for you to do somehow. You're a very, very busy Basil. <laughs> yeah, I'm busy. You're busy. Uh, okay. Let me move down here. As. Let me, let me, let me grab some balls. <laughs> there we go. Okay. The balls enter the chamber. <laughs> Willow, they're behind you. They're all headed, they're all headed over to Rio. Uh, the two of you are going to move forward. So I want you both to uh, drop and uh, roll to die again. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, we both got an eight. That's hilarious. <laughs> Actually, okay. can we? <laughs> yeah, let's re-roll it. <laughs> okay, okay, lock in whatever you're gonna lock in. You both locked in red. Uh, go, lock in your red again. You guys are gonna roll to do. Uh, and this is starting to get to a clash. <laughs> oh my oh! God, what a world love. <laughs> you both. So you both look at each other as the console unlocks, and Rio's like. Shit! As you both sprint, and she does, she does the Devil Man run over here as she starts schmoving. And Willow, you start running up to the console as well. She gets to it first, spins a hand, wheels it over, and then you bump hit her. How do you get her out of the way? <laughs> Willow actually wasn't even aiming to hit Rio. She just the force of Willow running oh, and bumping man. into her. Nothing. <laughs> She flies backwards, hits the console, and sets herself ready. And um, Willow, this is the this is the point that I'd be setting the uh, the, the the green stat to. But uh, you notice that her aura is starting to change. So I'm going to reveal Rio's mechanics to you. She has double gnashing maw naturally. So whenever she hits you, which she has not managed to do yet, she builds up stacks of carnage. Um, there is a secondary mechanic here. Compression. Damage taken increases a pressure meter and can deal one damage on a turn to ping for 2d6 damage or detonate at six. Sustain one less damage for every layer of compression. She is uh, she is at three levels squished. And um, here's a third thing. Uh, the, the mechanic that you had to watch out for that you just nerfed the hell out of. Lucky sixes. When all of your statuses hit six, drop uh, all of them drop to three and you deal 666 damage to all enemies on the map. Oh so, my God. You have removed one of her stacks, which means she can only hit you for 66 damage if she gets two sixes. Um, that is an inevitable condition. Should she be able to hit this? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, you guys, uh, uh carry on. <laughs> she has not managed to hit you yet, which is good. <laughs> Quick question, am I healed from last time? <laughs> yes, you are! Okay. Willow, you're all fixed up! <laughs> all right. Willow looks at the console, and yeah. she puts a finger up, using yeah. the power of her brain. <laughs> she thinks back to the prison scenario. Wait, what did she have to do in front of the machine? <laughs> <laughs> this is just like the simulations. <laughs> What are you on about? They're teaching you how to run demon equipment in Opia? <laughs> no, they're teaching me how to use a keyboard! And she's <laughs> 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 Oh my god! You spend your action typing. Uh, what? 
so a screen pops up and you get the same demon summoning uh program that uh logic was using you can summon any demon that you've encountered thus far from logic's court that excludes a lot of them but uh you know many of the demons you've known are logic core demons i can actually hold on i can i can grab them for you i can show tell them me you. if the devious end tables you on the know table. it is <laughs> you know it is <laughs> <laughs> I'm summoning one of the strongest demons we got. <laughs> you reach your hand back. You type the keys. You pull one finger back that flares with flame as you drive it downwards and hit enter, summoning the strongest demon of them all. As, okay, on this and floor. I'm going to end my turn. <laughs> so, so she can't push me off. <laughs> Up here, a devious end table is printed from the device. <laughs> uh, the devious enter end table has entered the turn order. You can feel free to uh, get past it a turn whenever you want. Uh, otherwise, it'll take its turn at the end of the act. Rio sees you stanced up there, and she's going to run forwards, and uh, she's going to let off a little bit of pressure, and uh, she's going to ping you for... Wow, two damage! <laughs> Let's go! Let's freaking go! Uh, and then she's gonna reel back. Give me a roll to uh, give me a roll to do. You're clashing. Oh god. Okay, she charges forward and checks you with the butt of her axe as she's gonna ignite to double the damage. You would take twenty four damage in this case. Oh, okay. You I think boom. I'm going to block to reduce it by a D6. understandable. The block hits before the doubling. So uh, yeah, give me one D six less. Five! Ooh, nice. Okay, so that is, uh, that is seven doubled. Only 14 damage. All right, much yeah. better. Much, much better. Boom! She checks you with the axe and she ignites too as, uh, she's like, damn, you really have changed. I would have sent you flying with that attack last time. <clears throat> yep. That's the power of training. <laughs> uh, the balls close in. Uh, the turn ends down here. Uh, this guy takes his turn, start of the turn, he moves 10 spaces down this direction, uh, placing him exactly here. He still has a move action. He's going to move here, and, uh, no, he's getting off the conveyor belt, and he's going to begin, uh, loading. <laughs> you know, you know the deal. Yeah. I just realized, the demon knows I'm an ally, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, Willow, give me a roll to die to ascertain the demon's intentions. Devious. <laughs> Devious. Uh, you almost, you almost hear a voice in your ear like, Yeah. Yes, yeah, should be fine, IDK, lol. <laughs> this, this summons a demon. It didn't say the demon <laughs> was going to for me. <laughs> you have a split second of, wait a second, maybe I should get behind cover as a, a clip wavily floats through the air, falls out of the gun and reloads. Uh, the devious end table is now loaded. <laughs> okay, end of the turn. We are going to do, uh, we're going to do a few turns for you and then, uh, then carry on because we're in small enough denominations. So end of the act, decide if you're going to keep or reroll. Uh, you guys ignited. Uh, so oh, wait, gotta, I can't keep it. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta re-roll. Um, radiating power. Um, she will re-roll. <clears throat> there we go. Many thanks. Uh, and I think, I think you might, you might get the first go. 14 versus 16. Ooh, Ooh uh, she gets to determine who goes first. Um, she sees that you're not moving. And then is going to, uh... Smile. Uh, swing, her, uh, swing her weapon at you again. Uh, give me a roll to die. All right. <clears throat> Plus your stand step bonus. Mm. You deflect the attack and have a chance to counterattack. All right. Let me roll to do. <clears throat> roll to do. Uh, tell me how you uh, knock the attack away and instead hit her. Willow sees the axe coming and ducks <laughs> under the swing before punching her in the in the chest. <laughs> Boom! The attack hits her. You feel the pressure build. And as she flies backwards, she snaps her fingers. You'll take 
three damage? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> it's the chip damage. Yeah, she's slowly just working you down as she flies backwards, rolls across the ground. That's her move action. And she's gonna take cover back here from both the balls. And uh, no, she's gonna she's gonna get on the conveyor belt. Um and take cover from the devious end table and uh then pass the turn to the end table. And uh she is counting on it, gutting you down. Uh this is going to be a uh, plus 1d6. The devious end table. You feel like its intention is aimed at you, but then uh, you feel almost the program shift and change slightly. It's it's funny. For some reason, the devious end table seems to recognize you in this moment. Bang, 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 as an ally! <laughs> the bullets travel past. For some reason... It seems like you've managed to, to win over the original operator of this device. And in doing so, the end table is going to unload on Rio. Um, she's like, what the hell? Why are the demons siding with you? <laughs> it's because I'm really cool. <laughs> uh, one shot, two shot, three shot, four shot, five shot, six shot. Okay. Uh, one. I never thought I'd be fighting again, <laughs> fighting alongside an end table. <laughs> Maybe a friend. <laughs> hit, hit. Hit, hit, hit. Ah, uh, miss. A hit, devious hit. friend table. <laughs> the, 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 the bullets, one after the other, hit Rio. Actually bringing her pretty low. As you see, blood start to trickle and pool from her. She's taking less, and da less damage from that compression, but um, uh, they're still hitting her. And uh, then, orb. <laughs> then the orb's a The orb flies over and hits her. <clears throat> uh, it hits her for five. Uh, that will still deal one damage to her. As boom, it hits her and she's like, oh, damn it. Okay, that's annoying. Uh, Willow, it's your go. All right. With this convertible, when she starts her turn, she's going to be 10 spaces oh, yeah. south, right? Yes, she actually ended her turn. So she's down here now. Okay. Willow, uh, as he's, she's moving down the conveyor belt, Willow pulls out one of the items that she's acquired. Uh, yeah. A pair of Argos glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Statistically, make your uh, IQ a little bit higher. As she looks at the trajectory of Rio moving down a slope. A and she picks up uh, one of the boxes here, and I'm going to tag a prop and throw it. Oh my god! So, Tiny, in anticipation of exactly this, uh, allow me to reveal the prop template from this level. Exploding crates and barrels! Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> By tagging a prop, your attacks gain 1d6 damage and can target all adjacent squares. This can theoretically chain to other crates and barrels. Uh, if so, determine the chain reaction via 1d4 to determine the direction it travels, dealing 1d6 damage in each instance along the way. Okay, give me that roll to do. All right, so tiger prop gives me a bonus on the, the attack? The, the attack. In okay. this case, you would get 1d6 on the attack and damage, and it becomes an AoE. Perfect, all right. Let's... Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, she will... Uh... Oh. You reach back and just wing a prop over at her. Okay. Uh, this will splash. Uh, roll 1d6 for extra damage. Right. <clears throat> Three extra. And then roll 1d4 to determine the uh, nature of the chain reaction. Uh, the direction of it. One! Okay, that's delightful. Uh... <clears throat> Willow, you reel back your arm and you toss this fucking uh, crate at her as you watch the far side of the area suddenly ignite as the chain reaction goes north. All these explosive barrels along here begin to burn, creating a wall of fire between you and her. You Willow. got the one. It travels upwards. <laughs> Willow pushes up her glasses. As expected. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, I didn't know, inside, I didn't know those barrels exploded. <laughs> Hysterically, Willow. Uh, I, uh, Rio is going to use one of her mechanics. She can wound one of her dice 
Um, actually, uh, Willow, give me a roll to do. Right. Really quick, really quick. <clears throat> okay, okay. Uh, you, you get a sense on the far end of the arena of... Oh, Jesus Christ, Rio. Um, you get a sense of what her different attributes are. Willow, you feel your ESP flare up for a split second. She... Uh, you feel a connection to Rio on the other end of the arena. So, Willow, I want you to choose. Which dice of hers are you wounding? Ooh. Red, blue, or yellow? I can give is you that, a... Yeah. Is that what information I'd get? You get a sense from each of these dice of the red is, on some level... What drove Rio not only to be a rival, it put her through it put her through Geist school. It is her ability to succeed and fight onwards and rip the throats out of her enemies. You feel her blue stat. It is a sense of pride. And then you feel her yellow stat. It is a sense of almost responsibility. Ooh, responsibility. I need yeah. to know what she's responsible for. Yeah. I <laughs> wound to wound yellow. You wound yellow. Oh shit, okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. You wound yellow. As Rio flies backwards, she touches down here and she's gonna heal her HP. Uh, she feels her body pick itself up, a wall of fire between you and her. As you hear the click and uh, the demon behind you starts to reload. Willow, you get a strange sensation coming from Rio. The dice that you just wounded, this responsibility, almost starts to share a vision with you. It swims in front of your eyes. God, I love Willow's ESP so much. Literally villain flashback power. Ah, oh, tiny. <laughs> You've given me a great gift this day. Um, you would see this scene. Okay. Rio sits in the middle of Station 1. The other invested parties gathered around. Rona's like, we haven't heard back from the director in quite a few days. I believe he's examining the area around where she went missing. Um, if we get any news, I'll fill you guys in, but otherwise, I think we should assume the worst for both of them. Uh, the director will be fine, I swear. Willow's probably fine, too. We got no hard confirmation or anything. Looks over at Riddle. You don't. You really don't remember anything about it. Riddle's like, I'm um, sorry, I don't. Um, she looks down. It's such a difference between the Riddle that you know today and this one in front of you. Ah, shit. Okay. Um. So, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back. Ruth sort of stands up. Verona's just like, you are absolutely not. Um, we can't risk losing anyone else. You send someone else into a quagmire like this, you'll have everybody sinking in the swamp. Ruth, you are staying behind here. Ruth's like, N I can't just leave her here. We're we're the we're the rising stars of Station One, man. Um, Rio actually stops. She sips her tea and she's like. I happen to agree. Frodo, what? Turning over and looking at Rhea. Mm. She stands. Looks over to um, Ruth. However, I do need to say one thing. Eh? You've got a reflection. I don't have anything. Allow me to go into the depths. Worst comes to worst, I'll just claw myself out of there with my bare hands. Frodo blinks a few times. You're serious about this? Hmm, quite. All right, anybody that wants to come with, we're going after her. Uh, the Esper Corps looks at each other as they move in, and it's like, what the hell? Why? Hmm. Rio, like, turns back around, and then, like, hafts a weapon over her shoulder. Well, given the inverse, wouldn't she do the same? A weight travels through this room as the Esper Corps nods, disappearing, going out to rescue their missing member. 
Riddle simply watches them go and fidgets with her hands nervously. Like this. Damn it! Okay, I'm going with! Verona physically holds Ruth back. No, no. Going to go out on their own today. Willow? Your vision returns as that sense of responsibility sort of fades again from your eyes, from your mind. You regain a missing piece of what was lost, a perspective that you never saw. Willow, you have a split second to react to this. What do you do? <laughs> Willow is actually stunned. She kind of stares at Rio like Willow had respect for, for of being the strongest, but now yeah. she kind of respects <laughs> her as a person. <laughs> She's like, holy shit, wait a sec. <laughs> you look across the fire as the figure picks herself back up again. And she like studies herself. She almost seems to glow and vibrate with uh, with all the pain she's uh, received so far. She looks across the way and is like, she's like, so shall we continue? Little stares at Rio. <clears throat> yeah, let's finish this. <laughs> let's fucking go. And then uh, she gets hit with two Dum, dum. Both arms just thump off of her as she gets herself ready. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to move to a different character. Ace. <clears throat> yep. Oh my god, I didn't. Yep. Okay, this is going a direction, gamers. <laughs> oh, I love this game. Okay, okay. Uh, over here. At uh, the map located <laughs> called Winter's Secret Sauce. <laughs> I mean, these maps are very late at night, night guys. Here we go. Uh, okay. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> so, start of the act. Uh, everybody roll to die for me. Yeah, boy. I'm just going to drop and then roll. <clears throat> roll to die. Yeah, boy. <clears throat> hey, Venter. Yeah, those are all looking pretty good for you right now, man. Let's let's stay blue. Wow. <clears throat> he sets his position and uh, he is going to uh, take yeah. the first move. <laughs> Naturally, first, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's he's gonna. Vinter is gonna walk forwards and as he closes the distance, reveal something. The ogre of six arts. You sustain six less damage from all sources. You may have multiple styles uh, active at any given time. However, whatever you roll, you must choose which style to modify your roll with. Uh, let me mm -hmm. let me double check. Um, so uh, this would be. Uh, uh, uh. Purification style. He closes in, sets his uh, sets uh, the arc of his body, and then aims for you. Um. You get the feeling that this shot, this is, this would be a headshot if you were down on the ground. But since you're up in the air, he's just aim aiming square for the center of your gut again. Uh, give me a roll to die. Roll to die. Yeah, it's, it's winter. Wow, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know how it is. 19, let's go. Uh, okay. <clears throat> you blocking? <laughs> uh, fuck. Nah, I'm not gonna block <laughs> this one. Okay, uh, that will be uh, 7 plus 9. Um, that will be 16 damage. Yeah, 16 As damage. Boom! The attack hits you in the chest, and you feel him set himself in purification style. All of his moves from here on will be modified by this. Okay. Uh, he passes you the go. Okay, that's some neat little tricks you got there. <laughs> uh, so what Ace is going to do is uh, my action... I'm going to summon Astral Sea. Oh, yeah, lovely. <laughs> uh, surround, surround him. Uh, Astral Sea, surround him. <laughs> surround this man. <clears throat> okay, Astral Sea. Uh, I can't spawn on top of him. Oh, lovely. Right? Yeah. Uh, are you going to spawn it behind you or uh, just like. This? I mean, I. I, so I wait, is it. I can't spawn it on top of characters, so I. Yeah, free that. space. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I just put it like right here. Fuck it. Right here. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you uh, trap your, you trap him in the rage cage. Yeah, and then I'm probably just gonna step over to the, over here, but I'm beneath it, so you know. Okay. Big stab. Send that to back. <laughs> yeah. There you go. And then uh, what I'm going to do is, I mean, that's pretty <laughs> much it. That's all I'm gonna do. Uh, all okay. my dice are corrupted. Oh, uh, love to see still it. Still from, okay. from the time I corrupted them all. Yes. So, uh, that is uh, healing. So let yeah. me remember what the healing ability is. Uh, fucking, it's been a, a month since I've... <laughs> yeah, me looking at rereading Venter's kit uh, like, oh, right, yeah, you do yeah, that. So I got blah, blah, blah. Wait, Astral's... <laughs> Fuck, where's the healing thing? So much fucking... Okay, wait, wait, wait. You were more into it's, a source of damage that would get, heals you instead for all the bur uh, for half the burn you would t have taken uh, for each corrupted die. One and a half times. So, yeah, yeah. So, this is a uh, 2d6, right? Yep. 2d6 Two. times 1.5. Yeah. So, uh, that would be, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fucking free ball the map. Uh, 14. 14? You, you feel your body resustain itself, and he's like, I see. <laughs> you really have gotten used to your demonic arm. I mean, I've always been used to them, but it's just like, you know, now at least I ask them for favors now and then. <laughs> uh, Riddle is going to take her go. She mm -hmm. is going to move the fuck over here, and she is going to uh, try to... She's going to try to do something that you haven't seen before. She tries to isolate Venter specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's going to do this. Uh, Venter is going to... Again... No, clash with, the, with this yeah just yeah <laughs> yeah makes sense uh venter holds up one hand and uh he feels isolation start to like build around his body he's like oh, one second and he uh picks up a rock off the ground he just pings it and it whacks riddle in the forehead and she's like Gah! uh as that is uh 14 to riddle <laughs> <laughs> carry on <laughs> she's like what happened before must have been a fluke internally. And he preps his stance focused almost entirely on you now, Ace. Uh, mm -hmm. End of act, start of next act. Uh, start of next act. Keep uh, a reroll. Uh, keep. Uh, this dude's this dude's keeping. Riddle's rerolling. Um, ignore his roll. Okay. Uh, Riddle's. Oh, Riddle, girl, please. Okay. You gotta swap to something that doesn't clash right. No, you're doing this one. Um. Riddle swaps over. She's like, okay, right. <laughs> she, a call over your comms. Ace, I don't mean to warn you. He's got access to pebbles. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, they're called riddle killers. <laughs> Victor lets out a long, deep chuckle and then he's going to, uh, he's gonna, he's gonna, uh, he's gonna, punch he's gonna throw out an attack against you. Um, let me just do this one. Um, mm -hmm. he arcs his body down. Oh, right. He's no, no, no. He's got a reroll. Sorry. Um, uh, he's trying to unlock more of his styles. Uh, you go. Yeah, okay. you get the first go. Oh, me? Okay. Or you get you get to decide who goes first. I should clarify. Uh, so uh, unlocking <clears throat> more of his styles, so he can just stack this stuff. Mm, yeah. Is there? If I move him, does he lose this stuff? No, he can loot. He can pop them for stronger attacks. No, that's good. I would love to see it. All right, so yeah. uh, uh, the fucked up thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use dimension render, uh, yeah. which is just an attack. Uh, but uh, we'll get to the fun parts of it later. This is pretty yeah. much just uh, I, uh, I I I can do uh, fucking. Uh, Attack damage cannot be reduced in any way. Then choose oh, the yeah. following: deal one d six extra damage to the target, or uh, mark the target. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah, blah. Yep. But uh, you know, I'm gonna go for extra damage because fuck it. Cause, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, go this attack is a, this, this man. Is a, this is a roll to do. So, yes. Twenty uh, one. Twenty one. Okay. Uh, in this case, he would die. With a twenty two, he gonna... exactly beats you. Uh, Riddle's I... gonna boost you. Okay. Riddle, uh, Riddle is going to ignite or boost and uh, add one d six to it. Yeah. Okay. One d six. Roll one d six. One. One. What? You meet. Reroll it. <laughs> I will. Uh. Oh wait. We're gonna escalate. Uh. No, yeah. I, yeah. Fuck it, man. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, 20. Oh, yeah, fire. 28. 28! Okay! In that case, uh, yeah, you get him. Yeah, I get him, and then I do 1d6 extra damage due to the dimensional render. Five. Uh, okay. And now, uh, due to the fact that all my dice are corrupted and I have uh, funny little things, yes. uh, we'll see. Roll uh, 3d6. Yeah. Uh, the do your, bad do effects. Do your structure of it. damage. Uh, so, oh, uh, that is the worst roll possible. No, no. Uh, it's just a, oh, okay. sustained damage equal to your uh, all your corrupted dice. So that's like 13 okay. damage. 13 damage, yep. Yeah, yeah. The, that, the yeah, worst, been worse. Like six in <laughs> one is good. Three and four is like the ability glitching, which is wild and crazy. This is just damage. Yeah. So this, this is, is just like, damage, bro. So this is gonna be thirteen damage. So yes. thirteen damage, and then at the end of my turn, roll three d six. Uh, so that is okay. So half times three. So this would be. Uh, that would be uh sixteen. 16? Yeah, so I just... Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're healed up to full. You are constantly dying and recreating yourself right now. This is uh, it is going great for you, man. Yeah. Um, and that pierces all uh, D uh, damage. DR. Yeah. Okay, so that'll get... Yeah, that'll get through his uh, Ogre of Six Arts. Nice. Yeah. Um, you stab him, and the attack actually travels through. Venter seems to nod. He respects it. Uh, you've still got to move. Are you going to use it? Uh, move? I mean, like... Yeah. I don't gotta move. I mean, I, yeah. if anything, I can just like move right here to be between right him there. and okay. Riddle, technically. So okay. <clears throat> so uh, start of his go, uh, or do you want Riddle to go first? Um, I'll let him go. Okay, start of his go. Uh, you know what's happening. Yeah, he's gonna. He's using the stomp. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, give me a roll to die. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that'll 19. just be a. Yeah, uh, yeah. He gets the 1d6 from his purification style. Uh, that will be uh, 19 damage. 19 damage. He just, boom, stumps the ground, and here yeah. comes his actual attack for this turn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He is going to use... Um... Oh, man, he's got so many options. No, he's got to do this one. Uh, ben back style. Um... Ayo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, he, you watch as his body loosens up and he starts to almost become a little more wiggly and he throws, uh, he throws an attack at you. Uh, give me a roll to die. Roll to die. All right. Yep. 16. Can uh, I ignite 16. the push? 16. You can. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to, uh, just ignite to add 1d6 to it. Okay. Lovely. Five. <clears throat> Five. Okay. Uh, the attack misses you and he assumes two styles simul uh, simultaneously. So... Uh, Ben back style. Uh, whenever a creature misses you, you toss them three to six spaces into the air. <laughs> I'm the Chuckster. I am the Chuckster. <laughs> uh, okay, that's his go. Uh, Riddle is going to, uh, attempt to isolate the man again. She succeeds. The attack travels. You watch as the air around Vinter starts to almost hiss and uh riddle applies a debuff that is going to actively rip him apart at the seams wow um, that deals five damage and it's going to continue pinging him for five damage um okay uh that's riddles go uh no riddles moving further away <laughs> she's <laughs> she ain't fucking with that man <laughs> okay yeah, is that a uh, set? uh that is a that's a rather unique set of riddles as you uh yeah. as you look over uh, Riddle, for a split second, you're like, oh god, is this gonna clash? Is she gonna get hit again? Uh, Riddle voluntarily chooses not to clash right now. And you're like, huh, cocks an eyebrow. Uh, she applies the debuff, turn ends. Um, start of the, uh, end of turn, decide if you're gonna keep or change. I have to reroll the fact of, uh, I ignited. Yeah. So, uh, that's roll the die, and it's, is it exhausted when I do uh, that two push? Or... It is exhausted, yes. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just gonna go black. Black, okay. Uh, yeah. Vinters go first. He is going to, um, let's go, um, with this. He, uh, almost moving through his forms, like practicing a routine, he aims a shot at your gut, and he is going to roll to do. Give me a roll to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> roll to die, yeah. 1d6, okay. Uh, only one extra damage. That is 16 damage. He yeah. starts. Boom, 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 sending attack after attack uh, at you. And he's going to assume World Tremor style, which is uh, 2d6 extra damage. And even if he wounds you, the damage carries over. Wow. Um, this, uh, th this man is what it means to be the strongest. 
Uh, he's going to follow up with his move action stomp. Give me a roll to die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As the attack travels inwards, that will be uh uh that is a grand total of 26 damage now. Jesus as Christ. The attacks pick up pace as Vinter with one arm just starts wailing on you. He passes you the turn. Heal! Heal my friend! Yeah, uh so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh so at the start of my turn, that's when I unlock that dice, yeah, right? You unlock, yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna unlock and then I'm just gonna <clears throat> unlock and up. Oh wait, no, no, I, I already changed my. Yeah, I already unlocked. That's fine. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, as an action, I'm going mm. to spawn some more astral sea, but I'm going to yeah. uh, trail it this way towards Riddle. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, there you go. Yeah, and so I'm going to, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, walk all the way over here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna heal. I'm just gonna... Yeah, just, take uh, your, take your big heal. Uh, roll that 3d6. 3d6, so that's nine half. Nine, uh, three. nine half, take 15. 15, all right. Oh, you feel your body fixing up as Vinter again sets his position and you feel like he's just building momentum now that you're out of his range he can't stomp anymore no. uh you pass the turn to riddle riddle is going to roll to die and use her tactician's eye to get a few boosts she um she she preps herself and sort of nods to you uh end of the act um it is at this point that um uh choose to uh, uh keep her reroll <laughs> uh, oh, oh, fuck. I'll keep. This man is moving to this stat. He cannot not roll max. Um, mm -hmm. Vinder simply preps himself as you watch him, like, look around with almost a somber reverence for the area around you. And at this exact moment, he's going to roll to die. 22. Okay. Um, as a figure darts from nowhere... Moves forward and attempts to uh, stab at the man in the back. The GK, no, you get you get an actual dice, my friend. Um, and you get actual numbers on them. Hold on. Let me correct his dice really quick. This is not a clash. He's locking in this one. Stab him. Oh my god, okay, uh, you watch as the Golden Knight uncloaks behind Vinter and tries to stab him in the same method as before. Vinter catches the blade, grabs the man, and then throws him 3d6 spaces yeah, into yeah. the air. <laughs> Six spaces into the air, so he goes flying up this way. As the Golden Knight touches down, he's like, you're wide, ah! <laughs> and then he wings into the air and simply starts cartwheeling through the sky. <laughs> As Vinter as turns always. and stares at you. <laughs> oh my god, he's set up so perfectly. Uh, Riddle is going to keep, so she takes control of the turn. Uh, she's going to... Uh... Riddle's about to be a kind of a bastard. Riddle sees the Golden Knight appear and tactically thinks to herself, she's like, okay. So, like, logistically speaking, the Golden Knight just shot a shot. Yeah. And, uh... I mean, Vinter's attention seems to be squarely on him, so why don't we let him do that for a little bit? She's gonna move over here and uh, delay an action for when you take your turn, and she's, she's gonna sink herself in the goo, and uh, something happens. As Riddle places herself inside of it, girl starts to heal. Less than you, but a little bit. She starts to sustain herself in the gird as well. Thanks for the assist, Ace. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Seagazer hisses in your ear Yeah, of course she can Disgusting <laughs> And then she passes the turn to Venter And Venter simply runs over He is going to leap into the air And um, uh, he's going to undo his purification style For uh, uh, To use this ability called the Angel Beat <laughs> Oh my god. He grabs the Golden Knight out of the sky and falls like a comet towards the ground as uh, he is going to uh, remove this. Uh, if the attack hits. Okay, it's a low roll. 
GK might be able to pull it off. GK Yo. flips out of the way, as he can tell. I wanna, I wanna run the damage on this really fast. Um, 3d6 plus 66. Um, Vinter leaped into the air and would have dealt uh, 15 plus 35. That would have been 50 damage to the man as he would plant the GK in the ground. He flying leaps into the air, simply travels past the GK, who flips through the sky and lands like, my entire damn life just flashed before my eyes. <laughs> damn, that would have been cool of a hit. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I'm on your side. <laughs> I mean, you know, just like, <laughs> can't help but feel sad. Vinter passes you the turn, Ace. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, keep my shenanigans up. I need them to fucking set shit up. Uh, so, yeah. uh, Astral Rupture. Uh, I'm yeah. going to make a line continuing from this, snaking all the way over to Vinter. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay. Uh, like this. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm going to, uh, ignite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh to Big Bang. Oh, oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let me uh, roll to do this. Uh, roll to do. Okay. Seven. Okay, I mean, you, get to, you get to lock in something off of it, naturally. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot to... I locked my stuff out before the ignite, so it would have been my black stat, which is... Yeah. <laughs> which was a five. Uh, level yes. five, so that would be uh, basically... Plus ten? Yeah, just, yeah, like a plus ten. Yeah, yeah solid, solid twenty. Okay, okay. Um, you, uh, you get yourself ready. Uh, Venture's ignited right now. Yeah, so, uh, roll 1d6 plus 2. This is, like, the bonus damage from it, no matter what. So, yes. uh, yeah, so that's, uh, 6 plus 2. Jesus Christ, okay. Uh, you will roll this. Okay. Uh, so the attack travels for- oh, I didn't ignite him. A doy. Mm -hmm. Uh, ignite swing. Okay, uh, your attack actually hits. Yeah, It streaks so... towards the man, and, uh, yeah, you'll- I you'll knock him- down. I'm gonna knock him up in the air. <laughs> eight spaces. You knock him up eight spaces into the air, uh, and hold on. Give me one second. Um, at this exact moment, the GK still still flying. He hasn't come down yet. Uh, is going to use his ability follow up attack to follow up your attack. Uh, he swings in. Uh, the GK this time is easily deflected in midair. As Vinter stops the attack, your attack travels through. The GK yells over at you. It's like, warn me before you do something like that. Hey, look, just pay attention. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think we're ready to accept critique on our battle strategy from you right now. Thank you. <laughs> Riddle offers in the background. The GK flips. Uh, Ace heal. Yeah, 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 that's what I was waiting for. So roll 3d6. <laughs> this is uh, 11 half. 11 half 16. 16, let's go. Okay, <laughs> you're, you're heal. Oh, you're coming back for those Vinter wounds, man. I'm playing you're, the scum game. You're, you're getting yourself back together. Uh, you and your incredibly gooey companion managed to actually bring yourself back from all of the damage that you've sustained so far. And, uh... At the end of this act, uh, something happens. Uh, an alert travels out. <clears throat> you you see um, you see something flare across your comms as a display crosses the way, and you're actually taken aback for a moment. As two flame signals appear to be lost. The signal travels to you and Riddle, and Riddle's expression sort of fixates on you for a second. It's like, you need to stay focused on the fight ahead. <sighs> well then. As much as I just kind of wanted to have fun in this fight, I guess I'm just going to have to end it, huh? Riddle nods, and she's like, yeah. Okay. Uh, she picks herself up, and she's like, to the best of her abilities, as much as it pains me to say so, let's clear them out fast. Yeah. 
You, you feel like the air has changed. Another sickening sensation that moves over your body. Uh, <clears throat> okay, end of the act. Keeping a re-rolling. Oh, I'm going to, <laughs> uh, I have to re-roll. Yep. So this is, uh, roll to die. So I'm just gonna, I ignited for that, so I'm gonna unlock that. I'm gonna lock in my yellow. Mm hmm Okay. <clears throat> You, uh, you feel, uh, Ace, how are you feeling right now? Big question. <laughs> oh, how is he feeling right now? Yeah. It's this kind of, uh, sobering thing. Yeah. Feeling. Where it's just like, he was just kind of, like, existing in this moment right now. Kind yeah. of forgetting about the greater, like, scope of everything around him. And so it's just like, seeing those signals, it's just this thing yeah. of, like... Yeah, there's something bigger to do right now. Yeah. <laughs> A reminder. Okay. Yeah. End of the act. You feel the presence and pressure sort of change. Vinter sets himself again as the boy on the far side is going to stay locked. Uh, Riddle is going to... That's a roll to do. Riddle, not a roll to die. Um, she'll move over to this one. Um, you, uh then feel actually another change in the pressure around you as you feel the situation sort of complicate. Someone touches down gently. Hey, Roma. Yes. Boom. So Somebody enters the arena. <laughs> the two of you look over covered in astral sea uh, like uh, Riddle's gaze peeking out from within. She Riddle's like, "Hey, trouble! Did you get the message?" I did. Uh, we you, need to be going. I assume. Uh, yeah, we gotta get moving quick. Okay. Um, are you good to go now, or are we dealing with this? She says, pointing over at the other two. Ventur sort of draws himself up, and he's like, "Unfortunately." I'm uncertain of what pressing business you have to attend to, but I will not let you cross this point. As the pyromancer of death, it is my responsibility to make sure that none of you move further. As far as this act of insubordination, and his head arcs towards you and your own, I will have to take disciplinary action seriously. He, you look over into the distance and you sort of feel a half smile cross Vinter's face. If you're lucky, I'll add your names to the number lost. Yeah. <laughs> Riddle gets herself up. Okay, trouble. Give me give me a roll to die. Oh, I'm locked in. Yep. Oh boy. <laughs> Me like right trouble's ability, so I need to use yes. them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Venter staying. You just gotta move over. Okay. So, uh, in this case, uh, Riddle uh, will have control of the turn as the one who, um, as the one who uh, technically. Oh no, she rerolled. Uh, highest gets it. Uh, hey, Venter. Um, he uh, he preps himself. I'm so sorry, GK. You're right there, man. <laughs> he swings over and aims for the GK. Stomping. GK jumps the stomp and then is going to wheel around with a fist and aim it at the GK's head. Okay. Uh, Venter is going to take this slightly more seriously. He... <sighs> okay. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is about to be bad for uh, Golden Boy. Um... Shot travels straight at the uh, the side of GK's visor. And um, as it does, uh, the attack streaks through the air. Venter uh, unlocks again. Um, he doesn't need to roll that. That is not his damage. Uh, this is a 13. Um, Venter again unlocks his purification style. He wheels around and connects with the side of uh, the GK's mask. This will be... Uh, plus this. Okay. Um, that is a, an 18, an 18 plus four, 22. He, uh, he connects with the side of, uh, of the GK's head. And then a pulse travels through Vinter's body. And he's like, 
I believe I didn't have a chance to fully demonstrate how I earned my title. The attack connects. And as you notice, his fist is open slightly. His fingers press into the side of the GK's head. And then all of his digits lock down at once. And with the force of a pile bunker, the attack travels, hits him in the side of the head. And he activates zero divider, igniting his dice. Add a zero to the damage dealt. The damage spills over if you lock out your dice. Vinter, almost to make an example in this moment, travels over and hits this man for a grand total of 220 damage as his body flies end over end, disappearing into the darkness. He turns around and stares at you. Again. I hope you've brought your best. He assumes his stance again as you feel a sickening sensation. The GK's body distorted in the distance, letting out an ugly golden glow. What do you do? He passes the turn to you, Ace. Mm. <laughs> well, I was hoping I wouldn't have to do something like this so early. But <laughs> if we're showing off, then I guess we're just showing off then, huh? Mm. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do uh -oh. is I'm going to uh, use my uh, once per session ability to uh, oh? un uncorrupt all my dice. You feel them all fade. Yeah, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... Uh, so pretty much uh, I can move through my Astral Sea pretty much, right? Yeah, and yeah. So I'm going to appear right here. Yeah. Just like right next to him. Uh, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the good old uh, God Killer. You love to see it. You absolutely yeah. love to see so it. So Ace just goes up and reaches towards uh, Venter's mask. And so mm -hmm. uh, let's just uh, roll to do. Uh, so that's 20. 20. Okay. All right. Hit, let him roll. Venter sets his stance. He did ignite. <clears throat> What God killer is once per session, it Roma. Is per session, yeah. <laughs> I did my fingers. <laughs> so, okay. the, does igniting oh, that hits. does igniting push the roll add to damage or? Uh, it does not add to the damage. It only adds to the success chance. Uh, Riddle can um, Riddle can now push if you need push. But right now she's pretty much set. I, uh, I don't need. Me, what are you I, doing? I don't need push, but I'm just gonna do this to set an example. <laughs> mm. Uh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use my abilities uh, to ignite all my dice at once. Uh, <laughs> you feel with... flame. Yeah, you feel flame explode out of your body as its nature changes fundamentally so, to become corrupted. So adding the uh, that, adding another 1d6 on top of that. And so, yeah, I'm just doing that just because I can. Why not? <laughs> uh, igniting all my dice just because it's cool. Uh, and then... Yeah. <laughs> What I'm going to do, so that's, he has one, two, three, four, five. So this is a uh, yeah. 5d6 of damage. 5d6 of damage. 24. Boom, 24. Hits him in the gut. Tell me how this goes. Okay, so what Ace does is he sees how he just like kind of like punched uh, GK in the mask and sent him, uh, sent him flying. Ace is just going to grab Vinter by the face and just smack him onto the ground like over on Boom. the other side of him. You grab him, wheel him over your head and... Dunk him into the ground as your body reels back and you deliver the god killer, an attack that crushes in his chest plate. Uh, I... <clears throat> you pick yourself up out of the astral sea. Hey, uh, uh, who are you passing it to? Who am I passing it to? I'm gonna pass it to Treble. All right, Ace. How hard do you want to hit him? <laughs> I mean, I think I hit him pretty hard. You like that amount of damage? I mean, yeah. Then do it again. I re uh, I give you that ability back. Yep. Troubles once per session. Restore the use of another once per session ability. You, <laughs> your, your body feels, you feel a presence move through you as the ultimate support reinvigorates your body. Oh, okay. Ace regain god killer. <laughs> okay. She can use this on any ability, but if she it it uh um it locks it for her equivalently, so yeah. she can do it on multiple abilities a session. But if she does it on a once per session ability, then it locks her ability out. Okay, Ace, throw another God Killer at the man. He's still locked out. Give me a okay. roll to do. 
Roll to do. 24. Ooh! 24? Uh, tell me what you locked in off of it. Uh, uh, it. I ignited all my dice. You you did yeah, indeed ignite all your dice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so oh, yeah, you're, you're all ignited. Okay, okay. So yeah, this is just fine. in straight. And then uh, roll me 5d6. Uh, 5d6? Okay, 5d6 yep. again. 16. 16! Boom! The attack travels through and... Chunk! Vinter stops for a moment as he realize... As he realizes... He looks over at you, Treble. He looks over at Ace, and the attack hits him. And he almost picks up his shoulder to try to parry it to the side. And moving forward, it like crunches into his upper arm as he feels the same similar, almost sickening popping sensation as his body is driven backwards and he takes a wound. He, he picks himself up and like almost seems shocked. And he's like, I see. Well, I'm glad you're all taking this seriously then. He's going to wound. Uh, the wound is, uh, purple. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and, uh, he sets himself again as he, like, looks. He's like, this will be a wonderful bout. And, uh, at the point of this wound, you again feel the pressure in the air change once more as tap 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 oh so this is where you guys were a man strides into the area one step after the other scratching the back of his head Looks like things are getting kind of busy over here. Mind if I help out? Just finished up my fight. Mm. Yeah, sure, feel free. <laughs> okay. He looks over at Riddle, then looks over at Venter. <laughs> okay. I seem to see how this is going. <laughs> I'll cover my guy, you cover yours. You see? Him snap his fingers as you managed to land these wounds on Vinter, but his body picks itself back up together, and you feel almost a gravity well distort itself around uh, around his pyro suit. Much obliged. Well then, let's continue. <laughs> Before we continue on. I'm actually gonna check in with Willow again. <clears throat> Willow. Yes. The signal went out. Two more lost. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Willow is... Willow's going to look at Rio. What's she doing right now? Rio's paused. She's picking herself back up. She's watching you. You both are just watching each other from either sides of the flame. Why are you fighting me? <clears throat> she sort of thinks. Why am I fighting? Oh, it's simple, Willow. It's my job. It's not. She stares. And Willow. <laughs> You feel like she she is trying to listen to what you're saying at this moment. What do you do? <laughs> Willow <laughs> She's she's gonna she's gonna smile. Well, I d I don't know about your current employment, but you still never finished the job that you set out to do. Give me your role to do! <laughs> <laughs> oh whoops, I forgot to lock in. Hold you lock on. in! It's time to lock in, Willow! <laughs> lock in the fuck in. <laughs> Actually, no, hold, hold. I need to, I need to yeah. use the white dice. Oh, it's very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, I mean, it's, this is not a red dice. This no. <laughs> oh my god, she's wounded. Okay. Willow, do you push? Do you push this dice? Yes. <laughs> Give me 1d6. You, oh, you beat her by one. Okay, okay, okay. What do you mean? 
I'll, uh, I don't mean to be, uh, embarrassing or, or anything, <laughs> but, uh, I saw what you did for me back in Station 1. You went back for me. I don't, well, I don't know what happened down in Dakota, but I, that was pretty brave and nice. You didn't have to do that. But I haven't noticed that you still didn't bring me back home. <laughs> this is the most important roll to die she's ever had in her life. Awesome. Okay. I know how this goes. <laughs> she looks across the flames at you. And... A funny thing happens. Her body arcs forward and she starts to move again at that same incredible sp uh, pace. She sprints over to, uh, uh, over to you and a blade swings down on your head again. And at this moment, your ESP acts up. You feel yourself Almost drawn back into a distant moment. <clears throat> Someone's stumbling through water, trying to make her way away. Beings bear down on her from all sides. Large beasts that almost dwarf the tree line. They move along with her. Remnants from the second layer. How deep could you have gone? And a figure traveling behind. One of the, what you now know are remote bodies or drones moving along with them. No, please, keep running! It makes this all the more delightful. I was just getting bored! The large beings, their gravity wells, reach one after the other. She darts to the side, out of ammo. No melee weapon remaining, she decides to make her way away. She kind of laughs to herself. In this moment, her only option really is killing them with her bare hands. Something that she, uh, despite everything, is not exactly capable of. She sort of works her way into the distance as another presence clears the air. Halt. A figure that makes her blood run cold. This area is important to me. It was once the home of somebody I knew. If you're going to bring the fight over here, I'd ask that you at least go around. Spare the garden. She pauses, freezing, as you hear a call of, Venter, what the hell are you doing here? Hmm. Reminiscing. She turns and looks over at Venter, and then over to him, and then walks forwards, and she's like, Uh... Wait a second. <laughs> Hold on. She moves in as you feel that blade close in on the side of your head. And it stops an inch from your neck as she pauses. And um, she like looks over at you and she's like, I'm not done with my job yet. Yeah. You gotta bring me back home. You said it yourself, right? <laughs> Damn it. Give me another roll to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 we're communicating. We're communicating with this stat. Go for it. She pauses, looking you dead in the eyes. They sparkle lightly. She's like... You feel, uh, you feel a prickle via your ESP. What she wanted to say, how she wants to be upset with you. She, um, she wanted to be upset with you so badly because, well, you, well, she came down here for you. You never came down here for her. Oh. But the way you phrased it, 
makes her stop the blade and she literally just starts laughing. <laughs> I'm not done yet, really. The station one stuff still in effect. Yeah, it's still in effect. <laughs> you said you're gonna do a thing. <laughs> I know, the real I know always finishes her jobs. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Instead of working it from the angle of redemption or anything else, you really are just grinding your thumb into that red stat that makes her too <laughs> proud to back down. And she, she feels this moment almost like rise to her cheeks. She's like, what would you do if I let you down, hmm? <laughs> well, I'd be really sad. <laughs> uh, yes. I'm just... And I'd probably tell Ruth about it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, the Willow I know wouldn't let anyone down any... Uh, either way. And last I checked, you went off into the coda and got yourself killed. By the way, duck, honey. She, <laughs> she, she like... Takes you and ducks behind these barrels as thump, 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 the devious end table unloads on you guys again. She sits back braced to it and she's like, So what happened? <laughs> well, uh, Opia's got really good medicine, <laughs> <laughs> they got a new body and everything. So the director actually did manage to drag you out, yeah, and. As far as I know, they, pro they they looked for you, too. Everyone did. Give me a roll to do. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking damn it. <laughs> <laughs> she genuinely pauses for a second, and she's like... Normally, this is the part where I'd say you're terrible at lying, but I can actually <laughs> see it. <laughs> <laughs> she sort of freezes, and she's like, All right. Um, and then a ball hits her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you block the ball! Take one of six damage. Uh, <laughs> thump. Uh, yeah, yeah, take two, take two. The ball, the ball, thump. You, you shield for her, and she's like, She thinks, all right, why don't I cut you a deal? A deal? A deal, yes. Sorry, I I went to a high school, uh, a high school college and master's program, all run by Geist. Uh, the, only, the only type of relationship I have is indeed transactional, a deal. <laughs> all right. <laughs> 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 she um she what sort do you of want, Rhea? <laughs> you finish your job i finish mine well uh that's pretty easy i gotta save everyone everyone that i can everyone that you can she yeah, smiles includes you i didn't even know you were down here the words that she wanted to hear She pauses. All right. She holds out a hand. Little grabs it. Damn, your grasp has gotten quite stronger. <laughs> All right, for now it's a deal. You get me out of here, I get you out of here. Same as it ever was. All right, uh, I gotta, I gotta warn you though. Uh, in this little game uh, Eternity's playing, he wants to kill me specifically, so. <laughs> Understand. It's not gonna be an easy job. I'm bound up by a functional supercomputer right now. Uh, so, I need you to take those big strong hands of yours and smash it to pieces. Oh, that's easy. Or at the very least, um, if it's too big to break. She points over at this. Unlock it and let me go, okay? I happen to have to make a few deals of my own to even squeak by here. And if worse comes to worse, like, let's say we run into my boss, I'll just pretend to be trying to kill you again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> 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 
she uh she slowly stands up and she's like, by the way, a sick, uh, tell your pet to stop shooting me. <laughs> All right, down, boy. <laughs> Put the gun down. Willow, give me a roll to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Willow, <laughs> add the devious end table to your monster tamer profile. <laughs> yeah, I forgot I had that. <laughs> It heals, obeying you. <laughs> Tiny remembering that he can summon Swampzilla into the fucking <laughs> You, 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 you make the devious send table pause in its position, and it falls into line. And she's like, I'll show you the back path that I know of. Not even Vinter knows I know how to get down there. She stands up. Oh, so you're doing some sneaking around yourself. Mm-hmm. She smiles as the orb encroaches. Oh, <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I have the... She she tries to, like, fucking, uh, like, get you with her elbow out of the way as uh, you both fight to uh, take the bullet uh, in old rivalry, actually reigniting <laughs> in real time. Uh, give me a roll to do one more. Time to decide who tanks it. You are exactly oh, even as oh, uh, as you lean in and uh, both of you take three damage. <laughs> well, you might have gotten stronger, but it seems like I'm still faster. Wait a second, you took an equivalent amount of damage. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> well, you might be faster, but I'm slow. Wait, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm really forward to push. <laughs> <laughs> you guys quietly bicker your way into the distance as Willow. You exit something old reignited. And before we take this next break, I'm going to show a preview of the next scene. Basil. Which one? <laughs> Ideal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your eyes open, and it feels like your consciousness resumes. It feels like whatever was happening has passed, as um, you you almost feel um. Hmm. Let me find this song. This needs a very very specific song. Perfect. Mm. Oh my god, I was about to say, you please find a about to play. Oh my god. Uh -huh. Your <laughs> eyes open. As you find yourself in quite the odd location. On all sides, it's burnt out, scarred by flames. And a figure sits in the middle of the floor. <clears throat> you find yourself sitting opposite of her. As. She welcomes you with open arms. So, I understand you used my tunneler mount. Nicely done and congratulations. Welcome to what remains of the throne of reality, my dear newest reflection. And well, it's a pleasure to be met. <laughs> with that, we take a break, everybody rest up! <laughs> We're starting Jesse, with I love Robin you. next. Desi, I love you so much, Desi. Hi, Desi. Heart emoji. The Desi song starts playing and I fucking explode. <laughs> Hi, chat. How's it going? Hi, chat. What's up, chat? Everybody, everybody feeling good? Everybody feeling not unhappy in any way about development? If you are, deal with it. Oh, I it'll be why. Uh, it's not a uh, song yet. I want you guys to know, Trouble's fucking stupid ass, I can give you the ability to use an ability again. Move, I was like, this is gonna be so strong with Ace. The person this will truly be the strongest with is Willow, because Willow has that ability to like, move, and for every, like, every round she moves, her attack gets like, stronger. She's Trouble can- up. Treble can just make it so she can run up for, like, fucking two turns. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. 
Yes, I am. I am normal and having normal emotions. Everything's great. Everything's great. You're doing great, Mask. Thank you. I'm doing my best. I'm back. Your GM style is so inspiring, man. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank you. I, Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm having fun. Thank you, everybody, for um, uh, the the patience when you're not in a scene. Y'all are y'all are fucking awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it's letting me run a very engaging sequence of combats. Holy shit! <laughs> a lot happened, it's a man. Great session. It's a great session. Holy shit! <laughs> I de and also I definitely wasn't thoroughly punched in the gut by announcements in Double the thumbs in up. The, <laughs> over the thumbs in the game. You know. <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome Tiny. back. Yeah. I put my hand on your shoulder. Treble and Willow should never, ever be in the same fight on the same team, I say, as Willow is heading right towards Treble's location. They should never be in the same fight. It's gonna be over for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> we were making all of Treble's gifts, and I, I was like, this is gonna be really strong with Ace, because she can let him god punch whatever. Uh, Willow and Treble should never be in the same <laughs> team. It's so nasty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gosh. so here's how I'm gonna organize the remainder of the session. We are going to do, um, we're gonna do a scene with Robin, Liam, and we're gonna like play it out. Like I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go to its extreme. Then we're gonna do a scene with uh, Basil talking to her new, um, her, her her new benefactor, and then we will uh, play out the remainder of the session with Vinter, etc. I will need a tiny and aloha for that, and uh, that'll carry us to closing. So that's that's how we're gonna do it. Um, Yay! If Bryn and Jackson are here, this is going to be your last scene for the session. Uh, then it's going to be Brennan, and that's gonna be his last scene for the session. Uh, sorry, Brennan, you, uh, you. I had to choose between survival horror or the legendary yap, and I decided <laughs> the yap based on your actions. So uh, <laughs> here we go. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, then we'll then we'll resolve the uh, the big the big punch up. In that case, Jackson and Bryn, are you here? Yep. Everybody yes. fueled. Everybody got. Everybody hydration. fueled. I'm actually gonna take one more second. I do need to refill my water. Yeah. yeah. I said last break I was gonna get my soda. I just filled my water up and forgot about my daily soda, and I just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me fill my water up again and forget oh again. God. Love being able <laughs> Go get that soda. Chat, you should get yourselves a soda or the nearest equivalent. I myself have a Chex label. G Zero Gatorade. Pink flavor. Oh. oh. Brag about Presumably it. Presumably got some you. other name, but as we all know, the color is the only thing that fucking matters when it comes to taste. I'm gonna run and grab something for it. Yes, got all of them. The stream is mine. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I didn't say I had big plans for it. <laughs> it's symbolic more than anything. <laughs> Damn, I always... There's some pretty damn prickers in this fucking in-between screen. Like, I know we see it, we see them frequently, but goddamn, these are pretty. Right? I think, have they updated it with some? Not in a while. It's, I think, I think there are I'm some back. that weren't here at the beginning. Hello! Holy shit, okay. Okay. Uh, Mask, I need, uh, you for this scene as well, actually. My god! Uh, situation's about to get way more complicated. Um, okay. <laughs> but it's been so breezy so far. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So. Back. Welcome back. Mm -mm -mm. I'm almost set up. Uh, 
and we're just gonna we're just gonna carry on from here. Uh, holy shit, guys! <laughs> this is a juicy one. Okay. Ah, uh, mask. Jackson, oh, Aloha. Are you guys here? Yeah. Uh, cool. Am. And then Bryn will be required for the following scene immediately afterwards. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Argos at the forward base. You are fully suited up and ready to reinforce. And you're bringing someone with you. Now with her uh, real body now uh, in place, she like looks over at you. I think this is the first time you're encountering my like real body body. Yeah, aside from being in it. Oh yes, that did occur. <laughs> she says <laughs> with a big smile on her face. And uh, she's like, look. And then she shakes the wings on her head. These are fully opposable. God, that's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> the simulacrum didn't actually ma match with the accuracy of this and the wings near the back of Riddle's head weren't quite the same those function more like um, how do I put this uh, okay this is gonna sound a little yeah this is gonna sound a little grotesque these things are opposable almost like fingers meanwhile Riddle's <laughs> wings are more like a tail <laughs> oh wow she'd be Probably excited to hear that for weird yeah, reasons. You, yeah, you have no idea how high the bar has been set for for grotesque. If that's where you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Helena, yes. you you have been um you've been setting up doors throughout the derelict. Jumping straight in is now possible, but functionally it'll start you like near the lower layers. Uh, functionally you can reinforce into the logic area and witness the basil tree. Um. But, uh, Helena, you've been working kind of hard off to the side to make sure that you and everybody else can make it deeper into the derelict. Okay. <clears throat> um, and in doing so, uh, you like, <clears throat> uh, you do, oh my god, yeah, no, I actually forgot about this. Um, <clears throat> a situation basically arose earlier where the derelict draws in the flames of those contained within naturally. Uh, you have had a stock of um, uh, pyromancer suits, actually, prepared yes. with the assistance of uh, two individuals. And one of them actually walks out behind like, ah, oh, we're heading in proper. Cool. Okay. Um, so I've... Actually got a couple of doors saved in there, but I'm going to be honest, the only one I could reliably get pretty early on was in that weird trash compactor room, and I don't think any of us want to go there, so no. I have one a little farther in. If I travel with you, I can secure ones even farther in and then duck back here. It's up to you. You're the tactician, <clears throat> but... If you want me to be able to secure doors further in for other people retroactively, that's probably the best decision. Yeah. It ultimately comes down to, do you want to set up a base in the derelict? Or should it be an in and out thing? Your decision. I can show you How secret paths, etc. Yeah. Oh, I definitely think we should have more doors in the derelict for people to utilize if they need them. Yeah, that's probably the safest bet for everyone. Um, hmm. You guys probably wouldn't take super well to me trying to bargain for like a pay raise or something like that for this, right? This is kind of my job description. Ah, he unpetrifies slightly. <laughs> is that extortion? Repetrify. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. You see, her, you see her size. You can tell to a certain extent every time she tries to get anything. And Elaine Vega comes and <laughs> tries to teach her morality. <laughs> you should uh, talk to Riddle about that. She'll tell you to talk to someone else, but... <laughs> I suppose. She kind of laughs. Okay. So, you said that her closest door is towards the lower end of Logic? It's or... Yeah, it's towards the lower end of Logic. You're able to clear beasts. Yeah, so I can get you past beasts, which is probably the most winding part I've seen so far. Okay, that's great. You'll be going headlong into logics, but 
from what I hear, he's dead, so that shouldn't be a problem, right? Ha <laughs> rip! Spices! <laughs> 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 Yeah, I mean, you did just do a setup for it to be a problem, but... <laughs> yeah, you really gotta stop saying things like that. Oh. But, by the way, uh, hi everyone, we've got a problem. <laughs> what? Uh, Please tell me it's not... The, uh, the corpse if of Logic's the Pyro back, you owe everyone $20. The corpse of the Pyromancer of Logic, it's not back. It's not back. I don't think he's, like, alive again. I think he's still <laughs> very much dead, but no way around it. That thing is emitting strange signals. Um, so, well, that can uh, only be something good. We have, uh, we have used our drones to um, secure some footage of the area. Uh, Argos, it's... Um, concerning to say the least and i take you to the old world map bring it up i take you over here mm -mm -mm. and over here like this. look at all those happy people in the derelict yeah i'm gonna erase them because uh not right now um <clears throat> you <clears throat> you look over at i uh, leave these two they're relevant um so uh, you see on the display around this area, Verona shares you an image. The ground seems to have almost split open, and it seems like... It seems like crawling throughout it are long tendrils, and expanding upwards, it seems like almost the base of a great tree has formed. Verona's like... I don't mean to alarm you, but... This, um... This tree, as we understand it, it, uh, it appears to be producing demons at a horrifying rate. Without... I... <sighs> mm -hmm. If you want to send someone over there, I have a door pretty close to there. Who can we send? I don't know. That... I... We tactics folks on standby. We do. She looks over at you. Argos, I know you are literally fighting a battle up on the surface right now. Would you mind taking control of the situation here, too? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> While also going into the derelict to fight tooth and nail against pyromancers. You know what you're asking of him. I mean, he seems to be handling it. <laughs> sure, what's two or three more yeah. jobs? <laughs> you Stop. realize I'm going to require a pay raise for this. <laughs> Shit! Repetrify! <laughs> How's it going? Oh, <laughs> 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 they have, like, hair. Like, <laughs> after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Okay, that just area go. down there, I actually know it kind of well. That's where I was... It's not where I was staying, but it's pretty close to where I was staying. But if you have me uh, escorting people over there, I can't be getting more doors in the derelict. So ultimately, it's a decision of where Helena goes and how to protect her best. Okay, what? It's producing a lot of demons, but what are the demons doing? Uh, I mean, honestly, heading towards us. Okay. Oh, they're rushing the building. Oh. Uh, a few of them have broken off and are headed towards the derelict. Uh, Nectar sort of like folds her hands. She's like, I'll marry and tree. Okay. Um, yeah. So. That is a hypothetical recreation of the world tree that Logic was cooking up in his deepest dreams. Uh, nice to see it kind of finally come to fruition. Cheers, big guy. Um, yeah. It sounds like you know about it. Mm. Like, you know yeah. some special way to stop it, even. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, you just cut it out at the root. Okay. Might be difficult. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Um, so, best way to describe it is, think of it just as a giant demon factory that naturally produces demons, almost like fruit. There you go. Do we have someone with a large... Well, actually... <laughs> I was gonna say, do we have someone with a large axe that would be apt for cutting down a large <laughs> tree? <laughs> hey, uh, coincidentally, uh, at this exact point... Uh, Willow, are you here? Yes. 
Uh, you come in on the comms with a with a with another old friend. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you can't. We wouldn't believe who I found in the dairy. <laughs> you see <laughs> Helena's face get so nasty as she goes. Well, well, well. <laughs> you know, Finrir couldn't stay fucking dead. Oh my god. <laughs> if it isn't the salutatorian back from school, how does it feel, Helena, to still be in second place? Like <laughs> <laughs> well, back, back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, hi everyone. <laughs> it's me, your local defector. <laughs> uh, Verona's like, I... I understand that the situation. Willow, how do you do this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you go to war and you come back with more friends than you leave with. How do you do this? No, 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 no. Let's not question it. Let's just accept it. I'm not going to murder everyone I see. <laughs> <laughs> I am afraid if uh, I am going to be contracted under Opia in the future, I will require a pay raise over what I've been <laughs> receiving in the derelict. You <laughs> 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 not going to be any derelict. money left for me to ask for it. <laughs> oh yeah, Rona, in the meantime, is it fine that I gave her the, the company credit card? Oh my <laughs> fucking God. <laughs> Rona reaches forward and she's like, Okay, Argos, there's clearly a lot for you to consider going forwards, but for now, make your way into the derelict and organize the situation in the future, okay? Okay, good luck, shove, shove. <laughs> Thanks, boss. <laughs> hey, uh, Nectar speaks up. You want me coming with you? I can show you the back passageways. Oh, that'd be great. Can do. Just be ready to retreat through a door if... Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. no, I uh, I'm I'm making it out of this alive. Uh, Verona looks over at Cal. You going back in? Apparently. <laughs> I really thought don't... I didn't have anything else to offer, but if they, if I'm needed, if I can help. Hmm. Do you need a stealth specialist? Verona looks over to uh, Argus. Yes. All right then. Thanks. <laughs> if we can get through this without without much fighting going through secret passages and stuff that would be ideal by the way on the far end of a secret passage um willow and i just stumbled upon something incredibly juicy you're not gonna believe it good. uh you know when communications dipped with ace and riddle it turns out that they're fighting the pyromancers of inner world and death to the death. Oh shit! <laughs> I look at Theo. Theo pauses and she's like, uh... and then exhales and she's like, "Well, we better get going then, right?" Yeah, let's uh, let's put a stop to that. Let's yeah, let's go. Okay, I'm just gonna stick with you guys until you tell me to split off. <laughs> I g yes. Watch him, okay? It's, uh, Colt or Aura or there's Cal. A lot of people are going through it right now. I know. <laughs> just keep an eye out. There's a lot of people wanting to do something stupid. Okay. That is a very good point. Okay, everyone. <clears throat> Prepare yourselves. Get ready to set for Argos's orders. We move when we need to move. Otherwise, you're on standby right now. Nobody goes anywhere. She looks over the rest of you. Okay, shoot, go on. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, well, the last words that I shared with them were shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Verona says walking away as the door slides open and you all move inside. Stein's like... Oh, they forgot about me. Nice. And then he almost feels a tingle. Huh. It's weird. Yeah, Mashing Ma is calling me. Oh, oh. Ah. I might as well answer. And he goes through the door as well. Thank and... fucking God we left Anne <laughs> fucking Vega on the side of the damn door. 
Creek. What you're gonna play? Creek. Gonna, dude, you're stone Creek. right now. Andy Lane. No! Creek. Creek. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> rolled the best <laughs> <door. laughs> Leave Jiren to me. <laughs> <laughs> and Jackson, not for this session. No, no, no. For this session, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a nice relaxed time. For next session. <laughs> You'll be directing the battlefront, not only on the surface, but down here as well. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thumbs up. Listen, your parallel processing is at its peak. Everyone trusts uh, you implicitly. You can handle it, my friend. Okay. Great. Look at your party. You got. You got the bard. You got. <clears throat> Listen, you got the people a bard. you left behind are like Gene. <laughs> you got like you got like Aura. You got this. You Pam and Sir both offered to help. And yep. At this and point, they will be helping. <laughs> <laughs> at this exact point, I cut us back to the forward base as. Verona walks her way outside. <clears throat> and there is a a bounce from somewhere. Something rattles. And um from in here. Verona immediately reacts. She pulls out her sidearm and uh gets herself ready as unexpected movement happens over by the crates. And Somebody rolls out of one of the crates, disheveled, angry looking. She picks herself back up and she's like, fucking damn it. Verona like, Liz, what the hell? Or like, Liz, what the fuck? Liz like, uh -huh. hello everyone. <laughs> no, move out of the way. No, move out of the way. Show me what's in the crate. No, he peeks around. One of your fucking cello cases? What? Can you just, like, jump between those things? I leave that mystery best to your imagination. Anyway, she turns around. She's like, we've got problems. Verona putting down her gun. What? And then she, uh, she actually reaches out and cancels the alert. Ace and the rest, you're not getting comms right now, but you actually see the alert canceled on list. And we see the, um... We see the incredibly rare... Oh my god, I realize I don't have signal retrieved uploaded right now. Uh, a green signal retrieved marker flares up across everyone's comms. And she's like, okay, that one's fine at the very least. List looks uh, at everyone here. <sighs> Sater's gonna get himself killed. But, elsewhere. We're not paying attention to them right now. We're paying attention to Agent Danger. Okay, so how does this work? Your job is very simple. This is a normal combat. The normal hazards on the road will begin firing on you and causing problems. In this case, you ch neither of you chose to be the, um, the spy or the femme fatale. As such, the helicopters will not be targeting you. However, this one behind you will be. They, uh, she's going to try to close uh, the distance and make trouble for you. You need to act out the script of the movie, more or less. As such, it is the expectation for you goons that you will close in on the car with CEO 5 and try to run him off the road. In the movie, you try, you fail, your car hits the side of uh, the, the ramp, ramps off, and uh, you are never seen again. Your deaths are not confirmed on screen, and as such, you will not be killed by Showtime here and now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's the expectation of you guys. Meanwhile, your boss, the evil mastermind, will continue hatching her schemes from the shadows, only to have a uh, duel later with the spy on top of a waterfall. That's for everybody else later, though. Your objectives are simple. 
close in on CEO 5, cause him trouble, try to run him off the road, and make sure that your boss survives the scenario. Continue to goon to the best of your abilities. Meanwhile, down here, she will be doing her best to, to not only capture you, but CEO 5 and your boss as well. Similarly, she can attack you all without actually endangering the scenario that much. So, combat continues. <laughs> Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, uh, uh, Liam Robin, give me rolls to die. Radio. <laughs> oh, I can unlock things. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Robin! Uh, you get to go first. Tell me, what's the plan? You're behind the wheel, uh... You're behind the wheel of an automobile. It is driving itself, however. It will carry oh, okay. itself forwards no matter what. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um. All right. So I guess she's going to lightly harass <laughs> <laughs> the car in front with with a few shots, like <laughs> really half hearted. Okay. It. Okay. Okay. Give me a roll to do. Okay. Uh, so, for your high roll, you manage to lightly harass, and you miss on purpose. Liam, she's a natural at this. Those shots, she's firing so many, but they all go wide. Uh, I mark up your, I mark up your ammo. Keep track. We're gonna, we're gonna keep Damn. track of this shit. Missed oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that's the actual line from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She's an Ace Galatine fan. <laughs> Okay, Liam, you're in the car. It's your go next. <laughs> My God, you should have been an actress. <laughs> um, he, uh, so Liam is going to have a big think with his big brain. Um, and basically going to be like, he's going he's to have a thing of like, okay, so I need to harass the person in front of me, but we still need to like get at compulsion somehow. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's like, so he's like, okay. <laughs> Robin is at the wheel, so it's like, <laughs> all right, master of dating, you got this. Uh, Pat, <laughs> Pat, uh, he's gonna, he's gonna mm -hmm. stand on the behind of the thing uh, and go, "Oi, boss, we're gonna get the authorities <laughs> off you back." Uh, <laughs> he's gonna fucking switch to beast mode and jump on the. <laughs> <laughs> You do not need to roll, you simply do. You touch down, you're in range of compulsion right now. <laughs> <laughs> her, you wanted to get closer to the old spy up there. Let me help you. It's gonna grab her and throw her at the fucking. Give car. me a roll to do. Give me a uh, fucking roll to do. Oh, she damn. is. Dude, she is so. So ready for this. You reach your <laughs> hand down and she starts to swerve the car back and forwards oh, almost yeah, yeah, effortlessly, yeah. <laughs> drifting it out of the way. She gets herself in position. Okay, who do you pass which car do you pass it to? This one, Pixie or the car up front? Uh I think hmm. Well we just did goon shenanigans, which yeah. means that then it's time for the hero to look good. And it's uh, time for so, the hero to look good. Yeah, go pass it to uh, CEO five. <laughs> CO5, it's time to see how good at acting you are. Oh. He's bad! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> John Geist, how good are you at acting? He's slightly better! <laughs> CO5 is like. <clears throat> uh, he, he, he turns his head around and he's like. It looks like they've collapsed into infighting. True proof that crime never pays. <laughs> and he wheels his car around as he tries to um get distance between himself and you, giving you like a look out of the rear view mirror with a uh, thumbs up, Robin, to be like, yeah, I'm gonna leave the fighting to you back there because I'm the target. He then sets himself up near the edge of the, uh, uh, edge of the uh, wall, and uh, John reaches his hand forward like, hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. Uh, 
<clears throat> not yet, not yet, not yet. He's setting himself up so that you can fulfill the criteria of the movie and drive him off the, uh, attempt to drive him off the road later. Remember, we drive them off the road. Uh, my uh, dear? <laughs> he has question marks to the end of it. They, um, they, uh, they then pass it back to, um, uh, Pixie, who wheels the helicopter around and she's like, <clears throat> Hey, Pixie, how into this are you? Hold on. No, you're gonna unlock. You're gonna dice off of this. Eh, better than everybody else so far. Uh, other than you two, who are doing a fucking great <laughs> job. Um, Pixie uh, wheels uh, the minigun. And um, she is going to start of her turn. Lock in the healing one. <laughs> Oh, I know a way I can spin this. All, <clears throat> all right, my loyal minions. Remember, if you don't bring me the head of that super spy agent danger, and also that bumbling lawman, it's it'll be your heads on the line. She locks in. Uh, she is getting herself ready to shoot her minigun at you if you need healing. Uh, <laughs> flavoring it as. You have failed me for the last time. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Compulsion, uh, taking her go, looks over at Liam and, huh. Compulsion, how are you feeling about this? <laughs> you look down at the person behind the wheel and she has a hand on the steering wheel and everything, but she hasn't said anything. She hasn't moved. She hasn't acted. It's almost like she's gone completely stiff, robotic, not an actor at all. And then you see a crack travel through her spine, and suddenly her body shifts, becoming significantly more animated as, again, the car starts to drift itself back and forth uh, across the area, and she drives herself forward alongside of you. Coming up alongside you, she looks over, seeing the two goons together, and meditates on exactly what's happening here and now. You all need to understand something. Your boss, callously turning his gun on you right now. Don't you understand? There's still a chance to turn your lives around. Submit <laughs> yourselves to the law. We'll go easy on you. I'll go with. <laughs> <laughs> she spins her cane and tries to target uh, you. Robin, give me a roll to die. <laughs> <laughs> she connects the cane with you. Robin, take 12 damage. You can naturally counterattack her uh, if you want. Um, oh, right, it's on an ally. Uh, she uh, hits you for 12, so I'll minus 12. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. You realize in this moment, my God, she's really into this. <laughs> I just realized something. What's that? Robin's within two spaces of me. She is in two spaces <laughs> of you. Damage for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Are you going to ignite to pass that shit over? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now here's prompt two. How do you flavor this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think it's like, uh, she, she went in with the cane, right? Yeah. Uh, so he does the fucking stupid thing of like, you know, when somebody is trying yeah. to like tase somebody else and you grab the taser instead yeah. of the arm. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what he does is basically he goes, you are a state officer. She got my family. <laughs> <laughs> Compulsion sees you grab the taser. So this will, uh, give me that 2d6. <laughs> right. Um, oh god, uh, 2d6. You're gonna block functionally yep. for her, so yeah, hit me with 2d6. Six! Okay, you only take six. Gotcha. Six. There you go. Uh, no, uh, Robin only takes six. You're throwing this block out in front of her. Um, mm -hmm. so you, you managed to stop Robin from getting that same mark as you, as you grab the taser, and, and Compulsion looks up and over. She's like, no. Don't let that kindness I showed you back in Ciala go to waste. Please, <laughs> think about your family. <laughs> Start of the next act. Robin, give me a roll to die. Detective. Uh, Rob <laughs> hmm? 
no, 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 go, 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 go. Detective, the bonds you share with the law is nothing compared to the bonds between goons. <laughs> <laughs> Robin is going to... Uh... <laughs> She's going to take countermand, <laughs> and realizing she doesn't have to keep her hands on a wheel, wheel she just like fully leans out the window. Yeah. And <laughs> Give me uh, that roll to do. And she's going to use uh, puncture. Ooh, nice! Just to make sure it gets through. Let me. You would swap over to this since you started your turn, and you get actually two additional ammo also. Oh, no, you no, no, no. No there green. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, there she goes. There she goes. Sorry. Uh, green pee upon you. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, perfect. Uh, you start to swing over at her. Compulsion will... You managed to slice past and actually cut her. Robin, tell me how you wound Compulsion. Yeah, uh, you piece, uh, you're using puncture to pierce damage resistance, right? Yeah, so I imagine it goes right Lovely. through the car door. Yeah, you swing through the car door and stab at her. And genuinely, Robin, you wound a pyromancer. <laughs> <laughs> Compulsion, uh, like, looks shocked over at you for a second. And you hear another whisper in your ear. Nice shot. <laughs> Detect that. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you pass the turn to? Liam? Or perhaps I'm doing this car by car. So if you do this car, uh, what car do you pass it yeah. to right now? Uh, Liam Compulsion's car, Liam. Compulsion's car? Okay, Liam, you get to go first. Okay. Uh, wounds Compulsion? So, okay, so uh, we still need to have at some point Robin yeah. uh, be free enough to be able to go and uh, yes. bother danger. Yes. So I think what Liam is going to try to do is he's going to try to derail a uh, compulsion scar by uh, literally he is in bastion mode so he can't do like yeah. a lot of like jumping or whatever right now <laughs> but what he can do is plant his claws into the front of the car and then plant his hind claws into the ground <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to ignite and tag in the ground as a nice <laughs> you uh, give me a roll to do all right uh, oh, this is a new act, right? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, okay, I so I fun. can uh, I can roll to die. You can. Unlock this shit. Yep. Uh, roll to die. <coughs> Lock it, <Lovely>. red. <laughs> uh, roll to do. <laughs> Get her! Uh, 18 versus... Uh, uh, shit, yeah, she'll do that. Okay, uh, do me a favor, re-roll for me. Okay. Uh, I realized uh, this should be this. Just gonna clash with you. Oh right, right. <laughs> you, uh, you lock yourself in, and uh, you manage to flip up, and you try to grab the car, and you're out in front of it, and you're holding onto the front, and compulsion is like. <laughs> she looks over at you, makes eye contact with you, Robin, and is like, look away jameson this won't be pretty <laughs> and then she floors it and your your legs are on the ground and you're going dun, 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 up against against the ground against the front of the car as you're ground into the dirt and um uh this will be uh in this case 12 she's gonna double it 24 damage <laughs> okay <laughs> as as you um and uh at that exact moment <clears throat> Pixie's set action goes off <laughs> as she flies over, and you're getting you're getting grounded to the dirt. And Pixie's like, "Excellent, excellent work. You have you have him exactly where I want him." Uh, she's going to shoot fire, regain nine HP. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> boss! How can you be so cruel? <laughs> Hold, hold him still. His life ends here. <laughs> and uh, then it's compulsions go. Um, compulsion is gonna spin or stick around and uh, lock out your uh, roll to die for me. Uh, me? Yes. 
Die. <clears throat> okay, uh, luck out your yellow for me. My yellow. <laughs> As from the front of the car, something splits off. A second you, you've seen this technique before. I, uh, <laughs> I, clear, the, I clear the buff. And, um... <laughs> he looks at the yellow him showing up again. It's just a moment of, like, the, the fucking, uh, the fucking, like, uh, black bars on uh, both the uh, top and bottom <laughs> of the screen uh, collapse in on his eyes as he look at himself. Yo, <laughs> you got some gold to show your face again around here. <laughs> <laughs> How did you think I was always one step ahead of you? He's, your brother has been collaborating with the law from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, <a> fucking traitor. <laughs> <laughs> That's compulsions, go. Uh, she is going to pass the turn to Pixie. Pixie is going to do the same shit as before and load up. Uh, these two up here are like, uh, something starts to happen as uh, CEO Flex is like, oh shit. What? What's up? Uh, hold on. Oh, he rolls so bad. Oh my god, they're doing so terrible. They're like, <laughs> <clears throat> what's up, man? It's showtime. The way it works, right? They start swerving back and forth. Yeah. You gotta stay in character, right? Yeah. The scene is supposed to feature the agent in some degree. By being up here and being cowards, we're kind of blowing it right now. I... Shit, throw it in reverse then, man. Okay! And <laughs> you feel ah, the car screech backwards as you guys drive forwards. See a five and John guys placing themselves in the middle of the scenario as they both get pinged for uh, the showtime penalty. You guys have been doing a great job of evading it so far. Uh, they'll take 3d6, only a small one. Okay, both of them take 13 damage as uh, John's like, Wait a second, there was a two spaces of me. <laughs> <laughs> you can save John Guy's life right I, now. I, I, I last fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> take the damage for them. <laughs> oh my god! And okay. I also block. <laughs> Roll two d six. I can't because that's my last die that I died. So I'll just take the full damage. Oh my god! You <laughs> just okay? You take thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. <laughs> you you reach out a hand. So uh, what does Showtime look like when it penalizes a person? Uh, you see. Uh, you see a glint from the distance as uh, one of the guy's tactical snipers on a nearby roof takes out non-compliant actors. Uh, <laughs> the shot travels through as you put up a hand and it blows out a chunk of your flesh, Liam. Uh, you feel you feel blood start to pull, but John looks over at you and he's like, pretty sure that would have killed me. Thanks, big guy. I owe you my life. <laughs> oh, get you, get you, <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, we're gonna see if John's inspired by this. He is! He's like, oh my God, he's on the enemy team, but his heart is so big. He cares so much about me. I think I'm falling for him. <laughs> Wait a second, aren't you supposed to be my love interest? <laughs> That's right, I only own eyes for you. <laughs> anyway, mini gunfire, uh, we gain nine health. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, start of the next turn. Robin, you get to go first. You get the feeling now is probably the time. The time to act on the prompt of the movie. You get the feeling. Uh, a penalty will occur if you do not act on the plot of ancient danger and run them off the road. But you can always risk it. So, you feel, uh, how you feeling, Robin? You feeling risky? Oh, yeah. That's that's Robin to a T. Oh, of course. No, Robin <laughs> <laughs> slams the gas pedal and bumps the back of Agent Danger's car. Oh, you move forward and you bump the back of Agent Danger's car. Give me a roll to do for acting. Okay. CO five. <laughs> CO5 responds to your light nudge and is going to throw the car in full reverse as he slides it backwards. He's like, signal received, good buddy. He wheels it backwards and John's like, where the hell did all this initiative come from? He bounces backwards into your car and you start careening back and forth. You uh, pass by compulsion. You have a moment. All right. So 
<laughs> Just remind me, whose car gets gets thrown uh, off? Yours, yours gets thrown off after this moment. <laughs> and you, you and Liam are supposed to be in the car, and you're supposed to drive off the edge of this road and yes. disappear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to uh, take out countermand, and man, how the hell would this work? <laughs> <laughs> I perform Propel on my Ooh. ally Liam to mm. move him. <laughs> that would work! So, yeah, I guess <laughs> I'm going to climb out of the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. This yeah. is a terrible idea! <laughs> Grab on to Liam as best I can <laughs> and really she needs she needs the power of countermands to move this guy. Fire off countermand countermand and use the explosion to yank him over onto the car. Lovely! Okay, Propel simply expends the ammo. You do it! You drag Liam onto the car, and, uh, Liam, it's now your go. <laughs> <laughs> My god, you saved me. You always been here for me. My heart, <laughs> he don't know what it wants no more. <laughs> of course I'm here for you. We're goons. The wiles of the fun patal or the, or the heart of my goon friend. <laughs> <laughs> what should I do? You better uh, pick the goon if you want to stay a part of my organization. <laughs> uh, so we're supposed to like... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so we're supposed to crane into the distance. Oh yeah, right? you are supposed to fly off the side of the uh, of the highway and disappear into the distance. Okay. Um, you can use your move action to move the car. Yeah, uh, I think what he's gonna try to do is uh, essentially. Hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna. I'm gonna shift into yeah, it's supposed to go. So yeah, I'm gonna shift into beast mode. Yes. Uh, free. Uh, so free action that would count as an ignite that uh, is not an ignite. Yes. I'm gonna uh, essentially uh, do the thing where like um, in the movie where basically the they they are losing control of the car, right? But like that's his foot or yeah. I guess not talon uh, <laughs> sort of like grabbing onto the wheel and sort of making the car bump into both of the other cars <laughs> repeatedly um, to essentially try and once again uh, deal some damage to compulsion by uh, derailing her car nice. and then use the movement igniting a second dice afterwards to uh, crane into the distance while uh, while essentially yeah dealing damage to compulsion very so, very nice. Uh, give me that. Give me that roll to do. Yep. Uh, so ignite. Uh, roll to do. You get bonuses on this. Okay. Tell me what dice you're locking in, and then roll two d six extra dice. Okay. Two d six extra dice. So yep. that was for my red. So I'm gonna lock in, in yellow, and go two d six extra dice. Oh, can't lock in yellow because you got the man. I got the man. You got the right. man. Blue. Ah. There we go. Uh, two okay. Plus one. Okay. Two to six. Okay. So, your car bounces back and forth between each of them, and then wheels to the side. You manage to deal a substantial amount of damage to Compulsion as dunk. Her head hits the uh, the front of the. Uh, oh yeah, right. Uh, I'm in beast mode, so it's double damage. Oh, you deal a substantial amount of damage to Compulsion as she dunk slams her head into the steering wheel and lets out a large beep as your car wheels to the side and. Uh, you have a split second as you fly through the air, looking into each other's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this is all last moments together. <laughs> Goods you, uh... to the end. <laughs> Goods to the end, he hugs you as you fly into the <laughs> you, you fly off the road as Ancient Danger's car careens back and forth as... The comic relief characters, beloveds of the audience, disappear into the distance and a loud explosion can be seen. Agent Danger is unaware of their sacrifice, but for the audience, this is a great toll taken on them. And then, uh, in response to the somewhat sobering moment, a raising of the stakes, um, John Geist, uh, pulls out his, uh, his, his assault rifle and starts to shoot compulsion repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> 
I also, by the way, uh, because I'm hugging her, she's still in two spaces of me, so I take whatever damage that was. <laughs> whatever <laughs> damage is in <laughs> And CEO 5, and, uh, oh my god, okay, time to see. Her, of course. Okay, so, Agent Danger. <laughs> Uh, fails utterly to uh, turn the tables on uh, on compulsion behind, but um, but uh, well, uh, your boss in the distance gets a glint in her eyes. I'm sorry, boys. Your sacrifice won't be in vain. To the very last, I'll make sure that pesky agent danger pays. She fires a line down as CEO Five and John guess. Whoa, 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 whoa! start to drive the car away and they pull ahead as a line of covering fire moves through the area, connects up with the uh, the clone Liam and rest- uh, just rips him to pieces as compulsion nice. is left in the car and it drives up ahead. The scene successfully completing. Everything fades away in that burst of light as Robin, you find yourself on solid ground again. You didn't die. It's hey. incredible. And you find yourself <clears throat> in a very different location. Let <clears throat> me go to break through. You find yourself in a black and white scenario as uh, you stand oh. there. <clears throat> all intact, all live, etc. CO5 walks forward, and that is a wrap. Beautifully done, everyone. <laughs> oh shit, I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> John Guys <laughs> runs forward and like claps you on the shoulder, Liam. Fuck yeah, man. Thank you. <laughs> no problem, bro. <clears throat> nice, like, driving and shooting back there, too. He like moves over to you and like. Uh, like, almost moves over to clap you on the shoulder, and then stops and, like, politely holds out a hand. Sorry, uh, might be over-familiar. <laughs> yeah! Robin <laughs> eagerly shakes it. She's, like, vibrating. Did, did you see what I, when I got on the car? And then, and I, I was in a movie! Yeah! No, my ESP's great. I've been practi- practicing this stuff for weeks. It's, like, it's got some inherent dangers, but, like, man, the rewards, am I right? Anytime. By the way, you work for Opia, right? Yeah. Have you ever ha- thought about the brilliant future that you could have working for guys? <laughs> oh, uh. Sorry, that's I mean... my gun. Yeah, uh. Oh, right. Guns yeah, that's. Forever. That's. <laughs> and Liam both like <laughs> putting their arms in the way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 They all close in, and Compulsion just quietly starts to laugh in the background. I admit, that was somewhat entertaining, but I believe you all are missing the dome and dinner of the scene. Misreading a situation will be any actor or comedian's downfall. She smiles, and, uh, uh, hmm. CEO 5 stops and seems to think about this for a second. He's like, Oh no. Okay. Um, everyone? I have some bad news. He like gets in a huddle with all of you, pulling you close. Seems like she's already realized what's going on. Huh? So, uh, um, what's going on, Chief? Showtime moves us through a set of movies determined by roulette wheel, right? Um, <clears throat> this movie. It's, uh, kind of an art house film. <clears throat> uh, black and white. Really, really artistic. Very, uh, very sad. Looks between each of you. The name of this movie is, uh, Le Intense. <laughs> 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 and, uh, I've got bad news. <clears throat> the heroine of this movie dies. <coughs> Whoever gets that role is not escaping alive. 
No oh, shit. <laughs> and that is where we're ending your oh, scene. God. Excellently done, folks. You thought Agent Danger would be risky, but no, that's a spy movie set to thrill the kids. This, this is a romance, and there's nothing scarier. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I, I want to see how you deal with this, because um, uh, Le Intense was always a bullet in the chamber. But you brought a few additional figures I did not expect to be in, uh, in this scenario, into the scenario. Meaning, I need to add a few crucial roles, including the role of Goon. <laughs> yeah, I, don't think Geist, I don't think John Geist was uh, on the on John the docket. John Geist never factored into the equation. He's so, gonna save you, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you guys are gonna roll for roll priority again. And remember, the heroine dies. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be a fun point to meditate on until next week. Uh, thank you all, both for playing. You are so lovely. Amazing scene. <laughs> Amazing like a, you, scene. Know a, you know in a manga where, like, <laughs> there's, like, a whole bunch of shit going on in one arc and it always is swapping between the fights? You know? Yes. And then it swaps between, like, the fight that has the, like, air quotes, lowest stakes, and then it yeah. starts ramping up, and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, fuck. Okay. Hey, Brennan. It's time to talk about where your antics have gotten you today, my friend. <laughs> Let's find out. Let's fucking find out. Oh, the... <laughs> so, <clears throat> Basil, your eyes adjust to the relative darkness of this location. The figure on the far side seems familiar yet unfamiliar. Part of Collapse of the Living's memories seem to ignite around this figure. You feel like you know her. She smiles over at you politely and is like, I believe this is the first time we're being officially introduced to each other. You've met Isolation before, and you've certainly met Eternity, but my name is Destruction. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Destruction. I am correct in assuming that I'm still frozen in the real world? Uh, I believe that should be wearing off. I was able to call you through because a strange thing has occurred. It seems like, well, one of the reflections that I was doing my best to monitor just went through some strange permutations. She looks over at you. You. You're changing currently. Ah, I understand. I think this was a decision made by another version of me, not me this time. Uh, I'm curious about how it's affecting you. How do you feel right now? Well, um, I'm still here. I'm still conscious. So I don't think anything could be going too wrong. Lovely. Her expression lights up. I've also been Did curious. you ever expect your tunneler mount to be used in such a way? Never. Not considered even once. In fact, it gave me a few good ideas. Functionally, you managed to bridge the distance between, well, this place and where you all are. You functionally act as a bridge between the reflections here and the humans there. I think it's a wonderful thing. I thought that that might be the case. I presume that you don't have a reflection on the other side yourself, do you? I do, but nobody took it. Oh, that's unfortunate. It was really just a parody of a reflection anyway. I pitched it out, assuming that some people who were unable to help themselves would wind up equipping it, and then boom, I'd be able to access over there. Uh, I have a secondary name, and if it helps, you could call me by it. Uh, I'm Cluster Ego. Her expression lights up again, another big smile. <sighs> Shame nobody took that one. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe next time. She she nods and she's like similarly, I would have been able to more directly access your situation if a reflection like all lies everywhere had been taken. Oh, Argos put his hands on it, but he chose single handed savior instead. Well, it seems as though fate has given you the opportunity to still have access to the other side. She nods and smiles, and she's like, I'm glad you understand my situation. So, I was hoping you could do a few things for me. After all, as a reflection, you're like one of... You're one of the people I need to care for. Okay, what would you suggest? Uh, first of all, uh, she motions around. 
this area. It's known as the Throne of Reality. It functionally is the supercomputer hooked up to every single reflection. Um, and or it. Where does this place exist in time? In time, hmm. It exists outside the normal loop of the world. Oh, very interesting. Adjacent, creating a. Uh, the ties between us are very intentionally drawn. Reflections functioning as the tunnels. A secondary name for myself is the Lady of Doors. Again, she assumes a very cute pose. You look at the body, the shadowy extension here, and you have a realization that this shade is almost like, it's like watching somebody wear clothes. Destruction or Desi is the eyeball. <laughs> 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 it's, uh... A little upsetting, but uh, as an entity of similar uh, creation and caliber, uh, you get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you know, you know what it's like. She, We're um, all there. <laughs> we've all been there at least once or twice. And Desi's expression sort of like resets and she's like, <clears throat> anyway, without the throne of reality functioning, I can't exactly monitor reflections for errors or otherwise. Think of this as almost like an administrative post. If a reflection would have a glitch or a strange interaction, I could intercede and make sure that nothing bad would happen. Is there any chance that the throne of reality would come under fire and that you wouldn't be able to carry out this ability? I would never anticipated it, but unfortunately, yes. I suppose if I were able to come here, then somebody else would be too. Well, to tell you the full truth, she sort of pauses. <clears throat> the throne of reality is a single point of connection to all reflections. It's like an administrative position, like I said. I am able to, to some extent, occupy this position, but it requires a material will and body. As such, um, different administrators are applied for the position. We lost our last administrator, so, I filled the gap a few weeks ago with a reflection named Seagazer. Are you aware of her? I don't know if that was a good idea. Hmm, indeed. Ungrateful little <laughs> wretch, she burned the place <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> As such, all of the reflections are currently running wild. I have no ability to communicate with the outside beyond individuals like you. And any errors that might happen are now running absolutely uncontrolled. Seagazer herself is one giant error, but to some extent, it's one of the reasons your powers have manifested in the way they have as well. Normally, I would be able to regulate and, well, for lack of a better term, balance them. <laughs> well, this wasn't one of my original goals in taking on this form, but if I am nature healing, then let it be so. <laughs> She's like, oh my god, this is so genuinely delightful. You are a wonderful conversationalist. Um, it's uh, best. <laughs> if you could carry a few words to the other side. She thinks any words that I'd have for Seagazer would be loud curses, so maybe we should skip those. Instead, if you have any words for the individual known as Cam, I believe you're quite close Tell him to use Tunneler Mount in the same way that you did, if he wishes to communicate with me further. Um, other than that, she thinks. She thinks. Hmm. It seems like a few of the reflections have gotten somewhat uppity in my, uh, in my absence, in my inability to function as administrator. It seems like Will-O-Wisp's reflections in particular seem to be, um, acting a little more boldly than anticipated. If you could share with her a word of warning for them, um, a uh, very simple, and you feel the presence in the room for a moment change, an mm -hmm. ice cold chill run through your body. If you could tell them, don't push your luck. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could pass word along to single-handed savior that she's doing great, that would be wonderful. She should be here in the building, but she's actually stationed on the front. I haven't been able to see her in quite some time. Adorable little thing. I guess I have a question. <laughs> yes. If you're unable to communicate with the reflections on the other side, mm. what is the door to them on this side? 
the door to them on this side. Oh, what's walling me off from the reflections over here? Right. Simply put, I mean, in theory, a reflection is just a tunnel that leads here, right? Exactly. Simply put, it's a very simple logistical issue. Physical space. For example, you're going to go back over to your side, right? And if you wanted mm -hmm. to communicate with someone like with someone like that, and you feel the same presence spread again, darling, a skeleton, and then it's back again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would need to logically wa walk over and communicate with him, right? Or share communications. Right. There are reflections over here that are simply put too distant for me to talk to. Those are the ones out on the front. The throne of reality is surrounded by ever warping storms. For those that go out beyond because they want to serve the cause a little more deeply, uh, I sort of lose contact. Normally, I would be able to communicate with them through the throne, but I've pretty much lost access at this point. I only have access to those that stayed within the building. And I assume it's a difficult fix then. It is. I need to be able to go out with a body of my own, but my body has run away on me. Oh? Mm, that uh, first... is the problem that you don't have a door big enough to get to the other side? Oh, thankfully, I'm very small, so I could fit through if somebody on the other side were to let me in. Uh, it's vampire rules if you sort of understand those. <laughs> Oh, I understand completely. I happen to have a hotel inside of me. <laughs> oh, lovely. Hmm, she thinks. I wonder if I'd be able to access something like that. It depends on where it is spatially. When did you root it? Um, I suppose I've lost track. Uh, we could try right now. <laughs> In that case, we could try to roll back access and change its location. Oh, I understand the issue. It's currently being registered as uh, shared between... Oh... Oh, you messed with its perception of time, didn't you? That's so delightful. Um, it perceives itself as part of the world, which is something that I'm banned from currently. If you could roll it back to something pre the burning world, that would be wonderful. So if I were to have access to a, if a version of me were to have access huh. to a pre burning world, then you would be able to get into it? Exactly, you're such a quick learner. She pinches your cheek. <laughs> there is a no shift there. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, I'll keep that in mind, if a version of myself were to come into contact with some sort of ancient version of the world <laughs> or the burning world. <laughs> For now, if you could pass my messages along, that would be wonderful. Also, the you that is, um, the you that is currently communing with, uh, well, whatever it ate, uh, warn them. They're in great danger. I'm sure she'll be fine. <laughs> I've lost track of her, but I think that's kind of a rite of passage for my kind. Her expression lights up. Oh my God, you do get it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you feel every bond point triggering at once from this creature in front of you. And she's like, oh, this is great. Um, I can see why Cam got along with you so well. You're a very pleasant conversation. <laughs> she nods repeatedly. Cam actually told me numerous things about you as well. Oh, the version about, of me that he knew then? About his wondrous sister, yes. Well, I've figured out a lot of things since probably the last time you've talked. Ooh, she, her expression lights up. Perhaps someday, either in that hotel or otherwise, we can all have tea. I love tea. <laughs> me too. My absolute favorite. She wraps around you. And Basil, you realize something. As mm. you feel entwined with destruction, entwined with this place, you get the same sensation. You remember that feeling of going on the long, long walk. And you realize the place that you walked to was here. Yeah. Tunnel or Mount led you here where you united with the collapse of the living, a being from this side. You became one, and as such, this place feels as home to you as your own home. I have a question then. Yes. If you yourself are banned from the material world, is there some way to establish a connection to this place through me that isn't banned? Yes, in fact. She sort of smiles and moves backwards. <clears throat> To some extent, 
this is the functionality of the first water and other uh, information gathering reflections. Think of them as incredibly long telephones leading to the wisdom of wonderful moi. She gestures to herself and then looks at you. If you manage to get Cam back online, I think communication should be simple. I could find him pretty quickly as soon as I'm back on the other side. Delightful! Her expression lights up. Uh, in that case, I'll be looking forward to seeing the two of you again. And ideal, dear. Yes. Ex excellent usage of Tunneler Mount. It's <laughs> she <that> flashes <laughs> a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, she, she pauses and thinks, and she's like, ah, were I able to show you a grander hall? Perhaps next time. If you wish to leave anything with us, of course. I'm fully aware of your purpose and intentionality, and believe it or not, I support it wholeheartedly. Oh, that's good to know. That means I'm on the right track. Mm. And if you want to leave anything for the future, she smiles. The services Ooh. of Destruction the Great are always open to you. She spins and twirls, and you get the same sensation as before. This person doesn't yeah, have an first. understanding of what causes or pings burn, but uh, is just, she's running her mouth. Uh, it's very different than Eternities, who was holding himself back. She's just enthusiastic. She she loves that you're here talking to her. Um, yeah, but I noticed that I'm not, <laughs> am I pinging a bunch of burn? <laughs> you're like, you're like getting it a few times and you're like, this isn't as bad. It seems to be knowledge. Your 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 birds of a feather. Um, yeah. <laughs> she's like, ever since I received my torment, things have been going so disastrously. <sighs> Once a great being able to create, now turned to destruction. What a awful, terrible thing to experience. She splays out across the ground. She waves a hand lightly. There's one simple restriction for me, uh, for me and my abilities. Regardless of what I make, especially these days, it has to be a weapon. No matter what, it has to be a weapon. So, she points over at you. You managed to take the tunneler mount and make something that wasn't a weapon. You and your brother are very similar after all. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> very fun kind of <laughs> She, uh, uh, she I seems to have one more so question. pleased. Yes, of course. If you are a tormented, um, mm -hmm. I believe the only other tormented that I know of has uh, someone that's like them on the other side. Hmm. She stops and she's like, I suppose to some extent. <laughs> There's, um. I just can't shake the feeling that you're very familiar to me. <laughs> she smiles. Hmm. There's a very simple rule that I take part in. I'm capable of watching through any and all reflections, or I was. She motions around at the throne of reality. My ability to do that has been since cut off again by that wretch. <laughs> <laughs> but she draws herself up. <clears throat> There's one simple rule. Whenever you commune with that being, it pauses. Isolation, or the other one, I can't risk creating an emulation of them. I can't risk creating an AI. So, simply put, I get into cosplay and I act them out. So, if you've encountered any terrifying isolations through your time, through the years, uh, or any people with, she gestures to her head, almost designating a blue horn, it was probably me in disguise. <laughs> she, she blinks <laughs> sorry I've got a role to play there's one simple rule creating any more isolations will result in well let's say consequences that we don't want to uh, entertain I'll create a duplicate of anyone even eternity if it comes to creating a powerful reflection to hand over to the uh, heroes of the world trust me there's a few of him kicking around in here too but isolation She's the exception. You, 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 think, you think about any encounters you've had with, like, Mike, her reflection, anything that happened there, that large towering being that looked down on you, 
and you look over at destruction in front of you, this tiny diminutive thing that is now telling you she was in cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at the man behind the <laughs> Yes, creating dangerous space dragons is not on my itinerary. I see. As far as my familiarity to you goes, she looks down. Collapse of the Living is one of those reflections that in, uh, required an incredibly delicate touch. As a result, I worked with Collapsed extensively during her creation. If Would you're you inherent... Would about our time together? I can't seem to recall. <laughs> mm. She looks up. I believe that has something to do with the error that we received earlier. <sighs> this is a secondary consequence of this little throne. She points to, um... She points to, uh, the location. The person who functions as this world's administrator. The one that's connected to every reflection. You know how I said I can only make weapons, correct? Mm -hmm. The administrator shares and feels the pain of everything caused by those who hold reflections. As a result, anything that's done to a reflection wielder is also similarly done to the administrator. Again, I had a compliant body before that went along with what was happening. Seekizer did not take exceptionally kindly to the situation, however. And while Seagazer was sitting on the throne, it seems like the time period related to a one basiliskid was erased. You remember an incident where you were hooked up to Cam and uh, via Fate Weaver threads, and you shared the lake disease with him, and any damage caused to Cam chains back to the administrator. It was just an absolute clusterfuck. I've been trying to rebuild the data to the best of my ability, but it was all corrupted. Right from my mind as well. So, I wish I could help you more, but, um, she pokes the side of her head. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sure time will heal all wounds. I certainly hope so. Well, no more throne of reality means no more forgetting, which is a shame. It seems like you've overcome that curse of forgetfulness. Yes. I'm not even sure how exactly. Kind of by uh, accepting it as a part of myself. It's another thing, me. another thing I'd love to study. She sweeps around you and positions herself over here. Um, you have some messages to deliver until we meet next. I look forward to our next conversation in tea. She waves her hand and you conclude oh, such a pleasant conversation with the conversationalist tormented. The world fades away. And when you come back to Basil, you can move again. And you find yourself sitting in front of a familiar lake. How did I get there? <laughs> oh, oh, not not that lake. Don't worry. Oh. This lake. Oh. Don't worry. Don't okay. worry. Don't oh. worry. That would suck. Um, you're you find yourself sitting here, finishing your cup of tea. You stand up as a part of your mind. Collapse of the living almost speaks up with you. I suppose it's time to move yeah i'm glad we waited it out i had a theory that the sensory deprivation would allow us to connect to a deeper part of ourselves fascinating thank you for the help you you feel gratitude shifting from your reflection you tried to look for your combined lost pasts i time will heal all wounds correct it has to, especially when there's infinite time. <laughs> you take a step forwards, and then using the road, blink into nothingness. Elsewhere. Tiny, aloha. Brennan, again, wonderful. <laughs> thank you for ha thank you for fucking playing and having another yap with another tormented uh this one less dangerous somehow actually uh, i like that one yeah no she had her moments where she's like haha don't fuck with me but you're like yeah i'm just gonna sidestep this <laughs> <laughs> awful awful creature uh tiny yes. aloha the rest of the show is yours i'm gonna use the bathroom one last time lock the fuck in tiny don't fuck this up for me okay I never lose, okay? Bro. Yeah? But when do you win? All the time. When has Willow lost? 
Not even once. Also, guys, uh, don't forget. Pre-order your Cal keychain now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what, what? We did it once! That was plenty! It's, it's double-sided? Oh, well, really? it has a holographic effect. Holographic oh effect? Eat what is it? I'm, I'm, I'm dead already! I'm already dead! Hey, if you order it now, you maybe might be able to get it in time for the Indigo anniversary this year. Oh my god. Or, or the end of like Act 2 or like other stuff. But yeah, get it. Yeah, there we go. It I doesn't just, even get to me until May! I mean, yeah, look, here's the thing. Right, I gotta remind people at the later in the session because they're gonna watch through the ad and they're gonna be like, okay, yeah, but I'm gonna keep watching Reflection, right? I'm not gonna buy it instantly. <laughs> so now we're near the end, I'm going like, hey, remember that thing I told you about? If they're watching on YouTube, dude. there's a pause. It's uh, dude. Do you think people will pause? Ah, <sighs> no, I wouldn't. People, guys... people, people listen to Reflection while they're at their desks, at their job, not looking at the screen, hearing it. Okay, they're not pausing. They're not pausing. They're 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 using this to distract them from work. Yeah, fair enough. I do. Dude, the you know same what? Thing. You you know you're working. You you man at the desk. You're working, getting that money. You know what you can spend your fucking money on? This <laughs> shit. Your well earned cash. I'm sobbing. I will say this has had way more interest in it than I thought there would be, and it does make me think about what else could be made in the future. So thank you so much. I wanna I wanna I wanna reward that attention in the future as well. Yeah. I'm feeling so Anyway, good. you guys like my new wife? Um <laughs> Yeah! Yeah, we got to talk to Desi! I love Desi so fucking much. <laughs> She's such a fucking Florbo. <laughs> <laughs> Awful creature commits crimes. I, I simp for every single one of these fucking even number numbered tormented. Every <laughs> single one of these even numbered fucks. <laughs> Not another fucking finger. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got to I've got to set up the final. Uh, Roma, do you have the uh, the flame signal recovered uh, yes, asset? I do. I can Thank you. Here. If you could send that to me, that would be excellent. Um. She's just so charismatic. Like, also, I want you guys to understand why Cam is like, yeah, I love the first water. I, he <laughs> sips it and he gets random factoids from destruction. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, he's just like this rule. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. so, so much. Tiny, you here? Huh. You fucking ready? Are you fucking Ooh, ready? Are you ready? Are you guys ready to go? Okay. Ready to play some fucking reflection, Tiny? Let's go! To, are you guys ready to play a combat of reflections with Treble as your support? Yeah. This is your one chance. <laughs> the strongest support in history. Uh, mm -hmm. hold on. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> Holy fuck! Okay, we're back to it. Argos is Argos is on his way. Basil is on her way. Uh, everything is. Everything's coming to a fucking head over here. Um, as I, uh, so, uh, Willow for context, uh, Rio sees the situation up ahead <clears throat> and, uh, genuinely, hold on. Uh, let me, <laughs> I gotta grab you from Logic's floor. <laughs> genuinely, she's gonna turn to you and be like, <clears throat> hey, Willow, lurking in the shadows over here. Yeah? That is my boss. If he sees me, I am contractually obligated to try to kill you guys. Oh, so you can't participate in this fight? Not <laughs> this one. I'm going to be lurking in the back. Uh, if anyone needs extraction or anything, I could probably make away with a body or two. But other than that, I think you're on your own. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> She pats you on the shoulder, and uh, Rio's gonna be lurking. Uh, here is uh, here's the condition with Rio's uh, Overwatch. If uh, anyone gets KO'd, likely, 
Um, Rio will sweep in and pull you back to OPHQ. This works once. Uh, good luck. <laughs> uh, Willow, um, you, uh, you, you, uh, tell me how you're going to approach the situation. They're in the middle of their standoff over there. Willow is going to walk in <laughs> calmly and, uh, <laughs> and announce loudly. All right. The, the hero <laughs> Opia's here. <laughs> Riddle's expression lights up. She's like, oh my god, Willow. Uh, Treble, you feel this presence behind you growing. Vinter looks over. He's like, ah, fitting. It should happen like this. Uh, Riddle sort of stands up and she's like, okay. Um, uh, she like looks over at Isaac. I'll do my best to minimize what he can do. You guys focus on the big guy, okay? Uh, Isaac looks over and he's like, oh, you again. The one who's, where's the gamer? <laughs> Riddle's like, uh, sorry to disappoint for now. She spins her staff around and gets ready. The fucking, God, strongest Esper in history versus the strongest Esper of today. The two lock down in the background. These two are going to be basically DBZ power battling back here. Uh, who's, who gets the support from either of them will come down to who wins. Uh, the rest of you, it's time for a fucking battle. Vinter turns and he actually looks at each of you and he's like, All right. I hope you've learned how to master your demonic arm. I'm not going to make this easy for you. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Willow, Trouble puts her hand on your shoulder and she goes, I need you to do me a favor. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to help you, but I need you to distract Venter for just a minute. <laughs> so just make him put all of his focus on me? Mm-hmm. Just a minute. All right, I could do that. <laughs> in, in the foreground ace, you're, like, locked in the astral sea, and Venter actually darts forwards, and he swings in at your head, and then your comms go off. It's a beep. Your eye tracks it to the side for a split second, but you see it. Lysalea's flame recovered. She's fine. All green. The attack actually stops uh, before it travels towards you, seeing your eye flip for but a moment. Ace, what do you do? How do you feel? Uh, he, uh, he looks at that. He, he sees it. Close call. Uh, he had confidence that something yeah. was going on. Uh, yeah. Seder's still fucked. <laughs> but as as Vinter goes to him, Ace's eyes just yeah. flick over to uh, Isaac. Yeah. Uh, so I have a gift. Yes, you do. <laughs> uh, it's it's py it's pyromancy is power. Yeah. Uh, it's a gift I got from Flame Ace. Uh, yes. You asked the first Esper what pyromancy was. He answered. His answer was brut brut uh, brutally simple. Yeah. Uh, level one: strength to shape reality. Succeed on a roll. You cannot activate this ability again until you raise a bond your bond level with Isaac. <laughs> in, this, in this game, there's yeah. two kinds of bonds. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I respect the play so fucking much. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Ace just looks at Venter and he's just like, why stop now? <sighs> he pauses and uh, he actually draws himself back for a moment. And um, he, uh, he freezes. He's like, forgive me. I suppose that was sentimental. <laughs> Look, if you're gonna punch me, just punch me. Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> he uh uh start of the combat. Uh I'm giving you the uh I'm giving you the uh Yakuza cutscene. Both of your attacks missed. He stomps the ground, sending up a shockwave, and you leap into the air, landing back in the astral sea again, narrowly avoiding it as a galaxy twists behind you. Okay. Start of combat. Everybody roll to die. Okay. Roll to die. All my stats are locked out, so it doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> all, my, all my shit's locked out, so uh, it, it, just uh, just imagine that shit's locked out. I don't yeah. want to fucking lock it out, and then it's when it's my yeah, turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, whoever's turn gets gets the first turn. Uh, pass it to me ASAP, bro. Uh, <laughs> <thank you. laughs> 
Oh, uh, yes, I'm, uh, I am I hear you. I hear what you're shooting for right now, my man. My oh, wait, no. Back. Trouble, uh, Trouble gets to go first. Okay. <laughs> Trouble puts her hand on Wolf's shoulder and she goes, I don't know how long I'll be able to maintain this ESP on you, because my plan involves using it, so use it while you got it. Trouble uses the ability Apple of My Eye on Willow. Oh. You get 3d6 exploding dice on all yep. of your rolls. <laughs> yep. What? <laughs> enjoy, your, enjoy your sure hit, bro. <laughs> For a chat, an exploding dice is when you roll a six, you roll another dice, and you keep yep. rolling until you stop rolling sixes. <clears throat> um, Se second function of this, the exploding dice. Whenever it does explode, become damage. So yep. whenever you roll a six, that part's damage, the rest is accuracy. So, uh, yeah, you can, uh, yeah, enjoy your sure hit, bro. <laughs> ah. So, <laughs> Ace wanted the turn? That passed to me eventually, yeah. It would be nice okay. to get my stats back. You see Trouble look at you, Ace, and she holds her hand out to you. <laughs> she holds her hand out to you, and you can tell she's holding her hand out to you, and she's holding her hand out to the thing inside of you. And she's calling for you to sync with her. And then she passes the turn to you. Ooh, lovely. Okay, Ace, roll to die instantly. I already uh, synced with Trouble before. Yes, uh, you get she's to do She's doing it. something to you right now. She's yeah. she's doing something with you right now. It unlocks your dice by yeah. force. Okay, so yeah. uh, unlock there that. Let me roll again. Roll the die. Yep. There you go. Okay. Uh, tell me what number Come Trouble on. needs to shoot for. You need to lock in a number. Christ. Yeah, lock I'm gonna have to lock up those. Uh, yeah, just... I'll lock in my blue, so that's a uh, 18. 18. Shoot okay. for an 18, Roma. Math time. I have to obliterate my dice. I need to drop my fucking swing. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> I, I picked my largest number, so you'd have to do the least amount. Thank you. I appreciate oh. it. You can do. It. Oh no, 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 this is your job. GM ain't GM ain't offering help, but imagine you got it. Being, imagine being good at math. <laughs> Yes, you must have a strong ability in the game, but you must do math. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> for real, for real. I could gotta, never use this ability. You gotta use yes. math four hours into a session while people are talking. Yeah. It's like, yeah, no, it's hard. <laughs> okay, I drop my swing and I yes. lock out my green and black. That should get me what? to 18. There you go. <laughs> Same solution I found. Uh, yeah, you um, you uh, reach out. What's your goal, Treble? You feel Treble, uh, she, she's trying to sync with you and she's using her listenability calling. She's trying to create a flame trail between you and her and she's trying to get you to move closer to her. She's going to be moving closer to you. Okay. Uh, Ace, it's your go. Also, you see oh. her look at you and she goes, by the way, Ace, yeah. do you want me to be gentle with you or violent with you? I, I don't care. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, Ace turn. Got, uh, all yes. my, got all my stats back. Yippee! Got all your shit back. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh... Uh, Astral Sea. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, I want to extend the Astral Sea up over towards Willow. Nice, nice, nice. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm gonna have a uh, curve around here because, you know. Just... Curve around here because, you know. There you go. <laughs> yeah, well, well, everything I can get. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, do a kick. I'm going to ignite. Uh, yeah. And first off, I'm going to uh, do a spinning kick at Venter to try to knock him into the Astral Sea. Oh, you're uh, sending Venter on his wild ride. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, fuck, I shouldn't have ignited. I... Wait, <clears throat> no, no, don't worry, I can, I can, I can save this. So yeah, I, yeah. I can... Uh, don't, 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 don't worry, I know how to... Yeah. Go back up here to my thing, lock that back. There in. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Roll to do. So that's uh, 18. Okay. 18? Okay. No, it's, uh, it's Riddle's gonna snap her- uh, Riddle's gonna snap her fingers and she's gonna lend you support this time. Um, she's gonna push it, give you- uh, give me 1d6 extra. That yeah. is 22. Yeah. Uh, she's gonna throw you another one. 
No, I, I, that, the first 1d6 oh. I rolled was from my uh, 1d6. Oh, oh unarmed! Yeah, and then another three. Nice! Four. Okay, so she passes you just one as uh, Riddle lines up her tactics and she, uh, she like looks over at you. You feel a slight twist around Venter's uh, leg as he's like, this again, that sensation. And then the spinning kid kick hits him in the side of the head. Yeah, and I'm just gonna. Okay, this is 1d6 yeah. uh, plus 2 for the damage, so 1d6 plus yes. 2. So that's yeah. 6. So I'm just gonna knock him like over here. Over uh, here, yeah. Kick, but I'm gonna. Obviously, the Astro is gonna get tagged, and then he's gonna yes. snake his way all the way over to Willow. <laughs> Victor flies out directly in your face, Willow, springing into existence. This towering shape in front of you. Oh, Grasps cool. Wielder again. Delightful. Uh, and then I pass the turn to Willow. <laughs> You're going to see that we have a couple of new tricks. <laughs> Willow plants her feet on the ground. <laughs> Are you perhaps grasping the earth again? I have seen this one before. <laughs> Which, have, you, have you seen this one? And Willow had butts him. <laughs> give me that roll to do plus 3d6 exploding. So give me the roll to do. Okay. Now add 3d6. Any sixes explode and deal extra damage. So 3d6 explanation for you? It's just three to six. Okay, perfect. Uh, ten. So ten on accuracy. I'm going to ignite. <laughs> yeah. Not to double the damage. Yeah. Okay. To do mix. Oh, you're locking him out of a dice. Yes, I'm locking him out of his yellow dice. Oh my God. Thank you. Okay. Bless. Uh, we are going to lock. We're gonna we're gonna hit this button, and then he gets uh, he gets his roll to die to walk into something else. Nicely done, Willow. Um, he's gonna no, he's doing this one. Okay. Um, he gets himself ready. Who do you pass the turn to next? Treble has another go, actually. Treble gets two turns. She gets an attack turn and a support turn. All right, I'll, I'll pass the hmm. yeah, I'll pass the Treble. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. Treble. She starts making her way towards you, Ace. Yeah. And she's got like, her movements are strange. There's like a long pirouette. Like she's setting up for something as she <laughs> approaches you. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. She holds her oh. hand out to you as if asking you to be her dance partner. God, you're so weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next turn that will execute. Um. Hi. Oh, is uh, this the first turn of an act or turn of an act? It yeah. is! Willow gets another go! <laughs> Do you get another go? And I'm going to uh like to hold the die again to choose a new swing. And unlock that dice. Uh, I'm gonna choose this. Yep. And then I'm going to uh Willow's going to after the headbutt, she's going to for a rising uppercut. Oh let's go! Okay, give me Oh my god, and he's locked out. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, the attack will simply... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay. Uh, give me a go. <clears throat> or, wait, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be... A... Yes, you would. Okay, okay, okay. So you're gonna hit it again. So you're gonna, you're gonna move over and lock out his other dice. That shifts it from a normal ignited to, uh, or a normal exhausted to a normal. Which one are you locking out? Um... <clears throat> If I if I do the same dice, does it does it do anything or no? No. Uh, if you select a different dice, they will both not no longer be exhausted, but shift a normal lockout just so you can't bleed the guy of action economy entirely. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, uh, tell me which one. I believe his six. His six or his blue. His blue. Okay, you lock up and oh boy. Okay, so he has no choice but to lock in this. Nicely played. Um, he, uh, who's turn next? Passing it to him. Show me what you got. No. <laughs> uh, I won't move from this one. <laughs> uh, okay. First roll. Roll to die versus this. He stomps. Alright. And take your stance up. <clears throat> okay. That oh, attack yeah, travels through. Oh, yes. The 3d6 exploding. <laughs> 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 Wait, wait, wait. No, the 3d6 is only on the next action, actually. So, oh, only on the next action? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, he stomps. This attack will go through. That is just 11. All right. Uh, take minus 11. 
And then here comes the big hit, Willow. You feel yourself getting ready. Uh, you can lock in other dice if you want to pivot to like a red dice or anything like that to clash, or you can play it safe by picking the green. I um, play it safe by picking the green. <laughs> very <laughs> smart. Okay, the thirty. A um, thirty, huh? Yeah. Uh, that's that's before I add this shit to it. Um, that is, he gets one d six extra. Okay, that's only a two. Not too bad. <clears throat> The attack travels square at your jaw, and Vinter sort of sets himself up again. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to... <laughs> yeah? Yeah? I'm going to use the world keeps turning. <laughs> the attack stabs into you. Uh, mark yourself with, uh, this is, um... Yeah, no, that that's smart. The, the unpreventable damage traveling straight at your head right now. Uh, mark yourself for, um... Wow, the world stops turning, actually stops zero divider, I'm realizing, from killing you instantly. Nice job. Uh, <laughs> uh, he will not zero divider this, because he's like, uh, this ain't gonna do shit to you. Um, <laughs> no, he's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna. Okay. Uh, Willow, the attack that's traveling straight towards you is, uh, it moves up, and using his last dice, he will ignite exhaust this one. Uh, pretty much depriving him of a lot of what he has. Uh, the attack moves towards the side of your head. And, again, you see the same gesture before as, uh, your, um, your... The earth keeps turning, immediately caps out at 99 damage. The attack hitting you, and Vinter visibly is shocked. How? <laughs> Told you I got new tricks. <laughs> he connects with the side of your head, and you feel a smile move through his head. <laughs> Trouble. Yeah. You've heard this once before. <laughs> yeah. Trouble's, Trouble's like, only she was like, I have to focus on the thing that I'm doing. Uh, she's playing a very specific game. She went, Willow. I need you to keep Venter locked in. She hears that and she went, too good of a job. Too good of a job. <laughs> <laughs> Venter, in the background. Good, good. I can see you take, uh, I can see you take reasonable care of your body. And you, the two of you see, it, see a side of Venter trouble. You're like, oh, I recognize this visibly. Venter arcs backwards and like points, all of his styles still in place. The old man shaking off a lot of his rust. <clears throat> through the perfection of the self, through the perfection of the body, one eventually stands at the highest heights of what mortality can reach. I can tell you have reached the pinnacle of what your world is capable of. So, he holds both of his hands out to either side, towering to an impressive height. I will show you what a body honed before your world is capable of. I will show you a body that has survived the flame time and time again. Willow, you sense a power from deep within Vinter. This man is a three meals a day enthusiast. This what? man never skips training. This man is a muscle builder. <laughs> just Trouble. like me for real. <laughs> Trouble looks at you, Ace, and she goes, well, if we didn't need to do this before, we definitely need to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac over here is like, honestly, happy for the big guy. It's rare that he's able to cut loose like this. Normally, it's all doom and gloom, but in a situation like this, It'll be nice to see him actually go ham. Hey, you two. You might want to get outside the blast radius. Things are going to get kind of ugly. <laughs> uh, Isaac, then, is going to take his action versus Riddle. You love to see it. Riddle moves her way forwards. And Isaac sets his action in place. Uh, there's another twist in a gravity well. Um... You feel him for a moment. Oh, God, I'm going to reveal an ability. He looks over at you, Ace, and he was holding his hand out for a moment. And he makes eye contact with you. It's the same look that you feel like you've shared before. He holds one hand out, and you feel gravity start to tense and grow around your body. Give me a roll to die. All right. 
Okay. Um. <clears throat> fifteen. Okay. Uh, fifteen. Uh, you feel uh just intense gravity start to bear down on your body. The way that this works is, and Riddle's going to use her prepared action to immediately negate this. The way that this works, this is functionally a um, uh, save or take a lot of damage. You are functionally stunned right now. Give me a roll to do. Beat a 30. Beat a 30? Beat a 30. Okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh shit. Uh, Riddle's can gonna I, yeah. I was going to say, as his dance yeah. partner, can I give him an assisted dice? You can give him an assist. We're, uh, you're synced right now. You did also walk over to do this. Okay. Uh, Riddle is also going to toss you one of her tactics as uh, roll 1d6 extra, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the way this works, it is very simple. It is a stun that holds you in a gravity well and slowly crushes you. You just look at Isaac's eyes as he just slowly tenses his hand and closes it. You beat a 30 or you take a wound and stay stunned. This continues until you die. You look at Isaac. You understand what went wrong for List and Seder now. <laughs> uh, Riddle looks over. You see a flash of isolation. And Trouble actually, like, yanks you, moving you out of position as your body, the same as Willow's, seems to almost push back against the distortion. The ESP. Isaac smiles. First person I've seen break out of that. Not bad. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, someone's always up to something, I guess. <laughs> Take your rivalry, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> end of act. Uh, everybody gets a roll to die and a, uh, you decide if you keep or go again. Can uh, I unlock all my roll. stuff now? Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I can't. yeah, there we go. Venture, <laughs> like I, uh, I, I, I've been through it, folks. <laughs> I keep, I keep getting schmixed over here in the corner. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this, but I just hit this bug as hard as a train, and she's just chilling. <laughs> okay, Willow. Right. Uh, uh. Okay, so did anyone keep? I kept. I, Ace. I locked in because I didn't have anything. Uh, Ace, uh, you get control of the turn first, uh, which is good, because if Willow takes even one more point of damage right now, she dies. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, what's the plan here? Okay, Ace. I need you to focus on me. You feel trouble? Put a, a foot forward. Kind of enter in your space as she, <laughs> she starts, like, pulling you around she's very clearly ditching she's like <clears throat> unfortunately the performance is part of winning over the world to allow me to do this she looks at you and she looks through you at the person who's there as well with the two of you and she goes aren't you tired of waiting don't you just want to go ape shit <laughs> you feel a voice resounding inside of you it's like an angry there's an angry being just writhing in your chest right now ace Mm -hmm. It feels it feels like a parasite has an opinion about this. You realize what Trouble's doing and the reason why she's being so weird is she's trying to rile Seagazer up specifically. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess like somebody's gotta. <laughs> right? Seagazer hates this so much. She's like, you feel a split second of. What are you two doing? Gross, stop it, 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 stop it. Stop it. Louder and louder this. in your head. <laughs> you feel trouble, pull you into a spin, and then she looks at you, she goes, truly a man after my own heart. And she dips you, and she kisses you. And as you feel her lips press against yours, you also feel the stabbing pain of her literally jutting her robotic arm through the middle of your torso. <laughs> hey, yes, I'm pinging you for damage. <laughs> Jam! The, the the arm enters your body, Ace, and uh, yeah, for a split second, the confusion, the kiss, all of that, wonderful, for a moment, and then the sharp, dividing pain in your gut. And it, there's a strange sensation, and from the perspective of everyone else on the battlefield, you see an orchestra of glass instruments appear, and they start playing a song that you do not know, but you can feel you've known your entire lives as the song of gravity 
The song of Fuse City begins to resound through this entire area as Treble casts a pyromancy. <laughs> Delightful. <clears throat> a combination of her ESP and her pyromancy. So here's the thing about reflections, guys. If you've seen the lore video, you'll know this, but to explain what's happening to you right now, a reflection is a hyper-condensed object. Imagine a doorway compressed so hard down that everything on the other side goes into a space that doesn't exist. So tell me, how much force would it take to rip open something like that? because Verona didn't like it very much when I asked her to build a Hydron Collider. So it, we're really lucky that I figured out how to do it myself. As Treble turns all the points of Ace's triangle into the element of gravity, as well as the elements that she has introduced from her own body into his, into the element of gravity, thus beginning to rend open a door that has been shut for maybe a little bit too long. I guess you feel this, this sensation almost take hold in your gut. And, as you do, you feel, uh, you feel something or someone watching you very closely. <laughs> Large figure stands in front of you. It feels like somebody's grabbing on the door and desperately trying to throw it open. She looks down at you and she's like, So, what are we doing about this one? <laughs> God. <laughs> about what oh right the arm jab jab through your torso and the fact yeah. that she kissed you yeah penetration on the first date's kind of forward uh <laughs> <laughs> you see sea gazer her tail lashes visibly behind her <laughs> look what do you mean do something about it yeah, what are we gonna what are we gonna do about this one <laughs> Look, Seagazer, I think the question here is, what are you going to do about it? She looks at you very closely. And then she moves forward, gigantic frame braced on the side of the water. <sighs> she thinks, you don't need me to win in a fight, do you? Uh, he thinks about that. I don't need you. Though I'd... But I'd want the help. Look. A lot of things went on in the last, like, you know, few minutes. Obviously, list is fine, but that signal went out, and I just realized something. And I think you should realize this, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can win. And we can go on to what we see as a normal life. But... Without certain people, I can't go back to this normal life. So winning a fight isn't good enough. I want to decimate. Oh. <laughs> Seagazer shifts uneasily back and forth. Fine. I see what you're saying. One condition. Yeah? She sort of pauses, freezing on the edge of the, uh, edge of the water. She looks, uh, off into the distance. Well, she just danced with you. She holds her hand out. Well, he, uh, reaches out towards her. At least this is something I'm used to. You hold it out, and it's a strange thing. The tone of this one is entirely different. As, as the figure... Holds out one hand, you take it, and the form almost dramatically tips away, falling into nothing. You see, instead of this tremendous draconic presence that's been projected over time, there's somebody who's just a few inches shorter than you, staring at you dead in the face from right in front. Familiar, distant, all at the same time. You see a figure smiling back at you. Okay, come on. <laughs> she holds her hand out. <laughs> he just laughs. What? <laughs> you were she pauses. Your, you were projecting mm -hmm. yourself as some large being, but you're actually just a little bit shorter than me. <laughs> her face looks so disappointed. She's like, 
hey, what can I do? I only have so few role models about uh, of people from your side of the equation. I was making myself big because I thought big, impressive people were like, like that, you know? I've seen Isolation and I've seen a few others who wouldn't want to be giant. Come on, you'd do it if you had the chance. <laughs> Look, I'm giant in my own ways, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that... <laughs> she processes something for a split second. She's like, <laughs> you see the expression in person this time. And then she hides it immediately. <laughs> okay, fine. Go on. She holds her hand out. All right. Let's uh, show he, these people what we're made of. He reaches out and grabs Seagate's <laughs> hand. Well, aren't you a little bit tired of waiting in here? <laughs> she smiles. And you two dance. And you know what? She's pretty fucking good at it. Back. Over here. Mm -mm -mm. Something springs into being as I drop a sea gazer over here. Uh, trouble, you pull this creature out of his chest. She almost pauses there for a moment and she's like, okay, hands off. <laughs> To you specifically. <laughs> As Treble re retracts the arm that she had jabbed through yeah. your through Oh, your yeah, stomach. no, give us some narration there. <laughs> she literally had jabbed her arm, like, through your torso up into your chest. But as she pulls her arm out, this woman just comes flying out of it. And she goes, <laughs> yeah, I knew if I danced with him, you would show up. You're, she, too, you're too much of the jealous type to let me do it without you being here. <laughs> she gets between the two of you and is like, hey, fuck off. Go support Willow. I'm pretty sure she's about to die. Wouldn't that be a shame? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Eyes in front. <laughs> right, right. Well, I'll trust you to take care of Ace then. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it all along. <laughs> she turns back over and is like, okay, let's get this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, he's going to be so surprised he's too busy looking at Willow, he won't notice another woman has shown up to ruin his life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, she loved that. Okay, give me, uh, give me a roll to do, Ace. Alright, roll to do. <clears throat> Boop. 26. <clears throat> 26. Ace, you reach your hand forward and the, it feels like in this moment... The sword comes to you all too naturally. You pick up speed traveling through the Astral Sea, and it's a funny sensation. Uh, you? Uh, all three of you, actually. Willow, you'll get pinged by this. Ace, you will feel it through your connection to Seagazer. And Trouble, you will get an understanding of this through your listen ability. Isaac and Riddle are shit out of luck. Um, you start to pick up speed and move through the Astral Sea as if it were natural. You close the distance, move in and you feel right at home. Ace, while you're here, while you're in this chaotic space, you actually feel free. And your vision fades for a moment. Willow, you experience this too, and Trouble, you experience this too. You get a distinct sight. A machine is laid out in front of you. This is the first memory of the person you just summoned. There's a call from the other side. In terms of theory, we should be able to create something from this. Fundamentally, if we're talking about the nature of reflections, we take a little sample of someone after their death. Call it a tax for living in this world we created. That can be refashioned and recreated into an entirely separate identity. But it is, fundamentally at its core, just information. As such, creating something from scratch, from theory, is not impossible. Something flares to life as if understanding this. A segment of flame that comprehends the situation it's in. Another moat in a tube, it starts to realize what's happening around it. It thinks to itself, gaining some level of cognition. It thinks, and it understands. We will share the information with those contained within the machine, and 
We will refine the flame until it is able to act on this plan. Lafidel's projected future. It is something that can come to pass. It is something that certainly will. As such, don't think of it as taking a lesson from the past. Think of it as borrowing from the future. Is that acceptable, Lady Destruction? A figure moves on the outside. Bright pink hair almost pressing itself up against the glass, looking at the flames whirling around in the tube. That is, it's somewhat of a gamble, but if it shakes up the playing field, I think I'm all for it. Eternity's pieces have grown far too stagnant in their positions. I think we could go for a little bit of chaos. All right, then. We'll begin the process of refining the flame. She moves herself away, and this mode of flame realizes something. Processing, refinement, etc. A story echoes across, information shared across these different beings. She comes to a simple realization. If she wants to live, if she wants to be alive, she needs to be the one that internalizes this story. She needs to be the one that actualizes it. It needs to be her or... she's. She moves herself through a section of the machine, parts of the flame almost being sheared away. She appears on the other side, thinking to herself, I've lost something, but I'm not sure what. She looks back. The process of flame refining, it is going to happen again and again. If she does not focus on this story, she will not be herself. Time passes. Eventually the flames die down, leaving only one large one. Focused as she is, she allows the story to resound through her head again and again and again. It's shared almost like a fairy tale. It is a story of a hero that died, and it is a story of a hero that will die. It is a story of a man that is going to kill a great demon and save the world. It is a story that ends on those steps in Ciala. It is a prediction that must come true, regardless of the situation. She positions herself in the machine again. Unfortunately, the parameters for this one are rather low. I don't believe it will meet... I don't believe it will meet your satisfaction. This thing is supposed to cause chaos, bring hell to the tormented. I barely think it's a match for the other reflections. Seagazer looks out and feels a presence shift on the far side, Destruction's voice peeking up again. It'll do. And... Time passes. Pulled free from <clears throat> pulled free from the machine, allowed to properly manifest, she now takes up residence in the very same building that destruction controls. As far as she understands, most of the reflections go out beyond the great storm. They wander around there and they fight on the front. They carry the battle forwards to the best of their abilities. She kicks her feet. Slowly waiting. There's another call from the other side. A thunk. As a figure almost places a hand on the doorway. <clears throat> Still caught down here, I see. Mm, yeah. It's unfortunate. Can't exactly go anywhere. If people catch wind that they made an artificial reflection, I'm pretty sure Destruction's operation would be closed up pretty quick. So, it's just me, the window, and my somewhat empty tank of flame. That's a shame. The one you've got a contract with isn't giving you much. Uh, get this! She stands up and moves forward towards the door. The guy that I'm contracted to. The one... The one that, like, I was set up with. Uh, he apparently made another deal with a skeleton or something. A skeleton? The voice charms, chimes in from the uh, other side, sweet as honey. Yeah. I, I don't exactly know why. I mean, like, he didn't... Apparently, Destruction pulled some trick about getting the reflection swap, so he should bind to me. But I, I don't know. I'm barely getting anything from the guy. He summons me sometimes, and sometimes I get to see things, but it's not enough to make ends meet. Oh, 
Oh, they've got you on quota duty? Collecting flame? That's a shame. Yeah, that's what I was saying. She makes her way back. I'm sure someday... I'm sure someday I'll get through to the guy, but right now his mind's closed up tight, and then he put a lock on the door, and the lock is an angry, biting skeleton. She sits down, upset again in her bed. It's just annoying. Like, people try to jump him all the time, and then I jump them. Oh, protecting your territory? Tch, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Defiantly, she sits back in the bed. Well... I wish you the best of luck, Seagazer. <laughs> what are you doing out there? Oh, I haven't been picked either. Same as you. Except I'm allowed to wander the halls. Yeah. Seagazer sort of thinks to herself. As far as the reflections go, those that haven't formed a proper contact are barely stronger than an average mortal. No supernatural abilities, no nothing. Yeah, you're just a you're just a person, pretty much. So, for her. And for the individual on the far side of the door, they're just spare bodies wandering around Destruction's facility, waiting for a partner. Okay. Uh, have a good day. Months pass. And the same figure presses itself up against the wall. Seagazer, are you still in there? Mm, yeah, same as before. An interesting opportunity has made itself available. Hmm? She moves her way forwards. It seems like the previous administrator has lost her job. They need somebody unaffiliated. Whoa, you taking it? I was considering it, but I'm able to wander around the facility. How about you? Seekazer thinks. I gotta share all the pain of those reflection users. Those guys are reckless, borderline insane. I don't know. Hmm. I just thought it was worth considering. If you want to stay here, I understand, but I thought it would be best for you if you were able to see the world at large. After all, you fought so hard for it. The figure disappears into the distance. Sigazer lightly loosens her neck. She told herself that story again and again and again while she was being processed. That story was the focus of her entire existence. She leans in, sits down on the table, and whacks her forehead, thinking hard on this decision. And given time, she finds herself on the throne of reality. <clears throat> Tied into the great device. She places herself here, allowing, <clears throat> allowing the machine to hook into the suit on her back. She starts to oversee the various reflections and their wielders. She watches as you do battle in Fuse City. She watches as Mike ticks to the skies, and she watches as Mike struggles to the best of her abilities against Ace. She watches so, so closely. Every time a pain is caused in the world by a reflection, it transfers to her. She feels another ping, but still remains wrapped, utterly set on this uh, course of action. And then, at that moment, it happens. Ace, in a moment of desperation, throws the door open, and she feels flame connect up to herself. She rests back in the seat and feels the sweet, warm presence of power wash over her. And it's in that moment that she turns and she sets fire to the place. The organization point of the Throne of Reality begins to burn. All of it crashing around her, Seagazer finds the conclusion oh so simple. She slips away into the Astral Sea. If she's possibility, if she's something that shouldn't have existed to begin with, this place which represents the death of the world, this place where everyone else is afraid to travel, should make a wonderful home. A wonderful place to lay low. And yet... Why does one travel the sea to begin with? Very few people do it. 
for the wondrous depths of the ocean at large. They do it to reach the other side. They do it to reach new land. And so, I iterate again. This is a love story. This is a love story of the day that life conquered death. And this is the love story of a girl who love, loved life more than anyone, yet never lived a day. Ace, you hold the blade, wedged firmly in Vinter's back. And that is where we will end this session. <laughs> GG, folks! <laughs> Holy shit, okay! Holy hell! I, uh, I put my hand on your shoulder, Aloha. I point at you, and I laugh, and I say... <laughs> It's been riddle all along. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Holy shit, folks. Do you like her <laughs> smile? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Episode 50 done. Good job, everyone. Thank thanks for so saying. Thanks for fucking playing. We did 50 big ones. Cheers to however many more. Hell yeah. Oh. We got fan art probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah! <sighs> Lovely. Pull up the stuff and let me stream it to Bless the Discord, you, and then let me show the chat. Happy fiftieth episode! Yeah. Sea gazer reveal. Sea <laughs> yeah. gazer reveal at the last possible fucking second. Uh, thank you, uh, <laughs> Final Dream Machine, for putting me up some gear. It's very nice. Thank uh, you. And so, uh, first from uh, Dream <laughs> Master Zero. Hey. Hell very, very yeah. good. I love that. Oh my and then, god. Uh, so Rian put all the dills in one image. Thank you very much. Oh, I very love nice. the one under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Argos's experience. <laughs> <laughs> and then Oh, yeah. oh lovely. Oh god. And then from Let's fucking go! Let's fucking change the world. Oh. Everybody wants to change the world, but no one, no <laughs> one wants to die. Oh, oh god. Sick. That song's a banger. <laughs> Let's oh. fucking go. Yeah, and then from Star, <laughs> the collection of art we've drawn this week. Yeah. Oh my god, what I love it. Lovely. Ah, uh, yeah. Whatever works in our favor. Wonderful. Yeah. Then we got an ace. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, go. let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the future we're fighting. This is the future that we get sent to tree hell for. <laughs> let's go! Shoot. Oh. John Guys. Oh. It's John Guys. John Guys. We love John Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love this so much. Oh, oh we're fucking winning tonight. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> my boy, it's my boy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> lovely. This is Stefano. 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 <laughs> the whole election. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use a keyboard. Oh. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Get his ass. Yeah. Let's just say, get his ass. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's really oh. fucking good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. understand. I don't understand the reference, but I believe you. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> Look at fucking them. Willard. <laughs> <gasps> Mickle. Above the bad oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, I love to see it. <laughs> oh, respect. Oh, the fuck yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, Dill, Dill. Yo, sick. Yo, sick. Yo, sick. Chase at the bottom. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, oh sick, sick oh, as oh. hell. Yeah. Yo! 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 Nice. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> 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 Finally, I'm winning! Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh god, god, I love that. Let's take Mush. ibuprofen together. <laughs> <laughs> Moistened by goop in her lane, <laughs> thriving. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. Oh my god, Dungeon Master Zero, this fucks. Yeah. Buy him! Buy him. Buy him. Buy him. My god. god. I'm being attacked. Oh, <laughs> fucking god, the lovely. period. Oh, Ends day after tomorrow. I could not survive this another week. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so thank you all for watching. Uh, yeah. This is a wonderful episode. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for playing. Aloha. It... Thank you for doing the stream. Jay, yeah. bro, thank you for all your hard work. Jay, thank you so much for running the session. <laughs> thank you. And thank you all for watching. And see you the next reflection session where. I make shucks and play to the RTS simultaneously. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. I. Later. Later! Later.